socket. And well, Marty, you've been around these uh, two programs for an awful long time. It's, it's going to be a great one as we take a look at Cumberland down below, and of course, with socket in the white uh, away mar and uh, maroon tops here today as uh, we're ready to get going with this one. Talk a little bit about the flavor of football here in Rhode Island. Well, I'll tell you, if you, uh, you wanted two uh, rival schools to play for a Super Bowl, this is it. They've met. Uh, this will be the 50th meeting all time between the two schools dating back to 1963 where every meeting has been on Thanksgiving Day. In 1969 Thanksgiving Day game was there to decide back then the Class 2 uh, championship. So these schools are familiar with each other and once again having played each other only 10 days ago a 32 nothing whitewash victory for the undefeated Cumberland Clippers. Yeah, you talk about uh, Cumberland coming off that uh, lopsided win versus Woonsocket. Motivation, obviously, for Woonsocket is there, obviously, for Cumberland. Uh, how does that play into this game? I mean, second time around, you learn a little bit from that first meeting. What's going to happen here this afternoon? Well, both coaches said it in the local print media this week, as you see the captains uh, meeting at, half at uh, midfield, uh, ready for the coin toss, going over instructions with the officials. Both coaches said in a short week, it's easy to prepare for each other because they're still familiar only playing them 10 days ago. They both played other teams to get here when Socket beating Central 27 to nothing on Tuesday night. And Cumberland just pasted West Warwick 48 to 14. And I, I think on Thanksgiving Day that they didn't really open up their playbooks as much as they wanted to. And if there was anything left in the tank, today is the day you save it for. Obviously, gorgeous weather here today. Temperatures about 55 degrees. I feel like I might be in the, the southern part of the country. The, the weather's so spectacular. Quite a difference uh, here in New England, of course. The weather changes dramatically. Yesterday, rather cold. The state of Massachusetts had uh, their championship games played out at uh, Gillette Stadium yesterday. It was snowing out, and today it's, it's balmy. It's almost summer-like weather, so it's crazy. Yeah, I listened to those games, actually, uh, up the dial. One of the Boston uh, media stations carried those games live, and they were saying what a great atmosphere it was at Gillette Stadium. And uh, today, you're right, it's 360 with the weather, and uh, with, the, uh, with the weather being sunny, and in the mid-50s, uh, it's one of the new facilities here in the state of Rhode Island, East Greenwich High School. It's a beautiful turf stadium, and uh, uh, not only this game being played here today, but after 3 o'clock on the same network, you'll have the host school, East Greenwich, playing the Middletown Islanders for the Division Three title. And that's an interesting matchup, too, because they played a big game during the regular season, so something to look forward to for you, Rhode Island uh, football fanatics out there. So uh, Cumberland, the Clippers, and the Villanovans of Woonsocket ready to play here for the Division Two championship on a beautiful day. We're about nine minutes away from the uh, the kickoff here, or perhaps they might get to start a little earlier, the way things are moving along here. And uh, I I have no gripes with that, Marty. Let's get it going, right? Well, I'm sure the teams and the coaches are ready. As uh, as we said, this is the 50th anniversary of this uh, this rivalry, and uh, we'll take a break here as the Woonsocket High School Band will uh, play the national anthem. Great rendition of the national anthem. I love it when it's not pre-recorded on CD <laughs> and they do it live. That's terrific, Marty. I'm yeah, looking there, forward to this Yeah, there's something to be said about a live band. And uh, uh, my, uh, the radio station I work for, we talk about how when live bands come and they play off each other, it's absolutely a spectacular thing. It's part of the whole high school atmosphere and part of, uh, you know, you're getting pumped up. You can see the Cumberland players on the side and Eric Travis was in the front. You know, nodding his head, listening to the anthem. For a lot of these guys, this is more than just today. It's the last time they'll be wearing their high school colors on both teams, and they get to represent. Cumberland will receive the opening kickoff here. Yeah, looking forward to the start of this one. It's uh, John Poirier to kick it away, a senior for one socket from right to left. They get this 
State Championship game underway. Twin safeties back deep for the Clippers on this gorgeous, gorgeous Sunday afternoon. The crowd into it already. And the opening kickoff, it's a high end over end kick and it will sail on down and it's fielded cleanly by Travers. And uh, check that, that's gonna be a quick whistle and perhaps a restart here is back deep. That was actually stock fielding that to the near side. Not sure what happened there as uh, everybody was all set, maybe except uh, the referee there trying to kick that off. And uh, Mitch Baxter and Dan Stock, two of this very talented. The one thing about this Cumberland team we'll see during the course of the day, Don, is they have multiple weapons up and down the line. And you're not going to be able to key on one player. And their offense has is, is just been firing on all cylinders. Uh, from the beginning of the year. They're averaging 33.7 points a game, so they know how to find the end zone. I believe they're gonna reset the clock too. It says 11.38, so they'll probably bring that back to the 12 minute mark and a restart of this game for all of us, which is exciting. The cheerleading squad from both teams down below entertaining the fans as uh, we uh, settle back in as they'll reset the clock. It might take them a moment to, to do that. You know, special teams play so important. We talk about the offense and the defense and what they can do, but special teams play in particular, extra point tries, so important in championship games. You know, the whole thing, Cumberland in their last, uh, in their last victory against West Warwick had a pick six. West Warwick scored to cut the deficit at the time to a 14 to six game. And the ensuing kickoff, Mitch Baxter ran it back for a touchdown to put Cumberland up 20 to 21 to six and essentially take the momentum back away from West Warwick at that point in time. And uh, you need to play well in all phases of the game. And you have to be penalty free because in this situation, every penalty may come back to haunt you at some point in time. All right, they've adjusted the clock and we're ready for the restart as Poirier set to kick it away again. And special teams unit for the Villanovans, ready to roar downfield and back deep Stock and Baxter. Stock to the near side, Baxter to the far left side as they're about the nine yard line. Kick high end over red, will sail on down. Fielded by Stock and he's across the 15 looking for some blockers out front and he brings it out across the 25 and toward the 30 yard line before he's brought down the play, got about 16 on that return and in good stead, early start here for the Clippers. Yeah, they decided to kick away from Mitch Baxter that time. Mitch arguably may be the most athletic and best player on the field. I've known Mitchell since he was a young man and his older sister happened to play softball for me at Cumberland. His father playing catch with him and the one thing he's really done in this offseason is concentrating on hitting the weights. He's bigger, he's faster, and he's stronger and the Clippers have definitely benefited from Mitch's uh, prowess. So the Clippers coming out first and 10 with the football at their own 30 yard line. They start with the eye backfield and the quick handoff and that Woonsocket defense is ready on the very first play from scrimmage as up on the tackle was uh, Nyang. As yeah, Sandra Nyang that time blew yeah. that play up. Eric Travis looked like he had some problems with his footing on that play trying to head up. Eric, one of these very talented uh, core of uh, Backs for Clippers, if we're coming Clippers, Joe Fine is more of a fullback. We'll win number eight today, and Dan Stock, number 20 as well, uh, who is now split left along with Mitch Baxter. They're in the work under center. They offset that backfield, and we get a flag coming out of the pocket of the official on the far side. So this game getting off to a rather slow start here, and I don't know if that affects the players down below or not, but it's a five-yard offside penalty encroachment against Woonsocket. Well, what you just did right there was you negated that great defensive play by Nyang on the play before. It looked like Jalen Evans uh, guarding Mitch Baxter on the far side of the field had lined up into the neutral zone. Curran again to work under center. Two wideouts left. They hand it off, and there's a big run roaring out to about the midfield stripe to the... Well, 40-yard line officially on the run was Travers, and uh, that's enough to uh, pick up the first down, so they move the stakes. Eric Travis, boy, he's a speed guy. He only started playing football two years ago. He's an all-state wrestler for the perennial power that Cumberland High School is, is Eric Travis, and he just brings a different dimension to this offense. He is all speed, and the one thing you'll notice, too, about this Cumberland offense, they go north and south. They do not go east and west. They're always attacking. Again, they'll use the quarterback going under center. 
Slot out to the left side. Hand off. They go with a big guy, Joe Fine. And Fine rambles out towards the 45-yard line. Boy, five yards of carry. That is not good for the Woonsocket defense early on. No, the Villanovans being tested once again by that Cumberland offense. Just attacking, attacking. Joe Fine, the son of Bryant University head coach Marty Fine, um, who has uh, moved to, since been at Rhode Island. And Joe's is one guy who you don't have to worry about him tippy-toeing. He is just low, you, low in my shoulder pads, low in my helmet. He's a good hard runner that takes good angles. That's fine, and he usually runs from his fullback slot for this Cumberland offense. Baxter goes wide to the left. Second down, we'll call it five to go for the Clippers. And they'll hand it off. Travis looking for that hole, finds one, and that's a short gain of about three yards. Gang tackled there by the Villanovans. As a, if you're wearing a Villanovan uniform, you're probably on the tackle that time again. Nyang again helping out. He's been all over the field thus far. Yeah, Nyang, very talented. Uh, one of the seniors on this Winsocket team, along with Sean Ingram, big Sean Ingram off the defensive line for Winsocket. And uh, Eric Travis is a very speedy, shifty runner, and it takes more than one guy to wrap him up. And uh, if you're Winsocket, big third down here early to see if you can get the Clippers uh, to punt the ball. Travers got three on that last carry. Third down and about two to go. Again, they offset the eye backfield wing to the near right side for Gurl. And when Socket may have jumped offside again, it could be the cadence there from the quarterback uh, disrupting the concentration of one Socket. Here, let's see which way, this way oh, may go against. Yeah, Brendan yeah. Garen that time gave the uh, gave the hard count, and it's going he drew one Socket off as they're trying to come to alleviate that run. Uh, as we said, these teams only played uh, ten days ago on Thanksgiving Day, November twenty second, and. You know, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to change up? Both coaches said they were familiar with things, and uh, Brendan Guerin changing his cadence there. Get the Novins to jump, and good for a clip of first down as they cross over into Winsocket territory. They've been doing it on the ground. A couple of penalties have helped the cause, and now the Clippers do have it first and 10 at the 47. They're going to run that up the middle again, and Fine will take a pile with him. He might play a little rugby, too. You know, Coach Fine out at Bryant had a relationship with him a few years ago, and that was broadcasting football for Southern Connecticut State University when they were a Division II squad. So, Coach Fine, just a wonderful guy. A wonderful guy and uh, a great, uh, obviously a great wealth of football knowledge and Bryant University here in Smithfield around. Lucky to have him, but no doubt about Joe Fine, as we alluded to earlier, puts his head down, lowered his shoulders, and uh, the quick handoff by Brendan Garrett to him. Good hard runner by Joe Fine that time. They got about six yards. They hand it off. Travers looking for a hole. Busts it to the near side right. That's a big gainer. He's down inside the 30-yard line and continues all the way towards the 18 before he's brought down on the play. Well, he's got a nice vision, doesn't he, in that quick step to the outside. Yeah, he does. But credit Dan Stock on that play, too. Stock came from his wide receiver side. Had a nice kickout block. Ended up sealing the inside man there to allow Eric Travers to get another 10 yards on that play. And... Uh, as you said, the Clippers all business on the ground. Fine has rushed for 485 yards this year. Eric Travis for 757 yards this year. Uh, but don't forget, Brendan Garrett can also throw the ball. He has thrown for 18 touchdowns and close to 1,500 yards for the Clippers. Garrett with twin wideouts to the right will take the snap. He wants to throw, rolls out, looks left, wants to throw, finds the receiver. Fine makes the catch down toward the 11 yard line. Great look by the quarterback, Garen, right there to find the open man. Right on cue. Thank you, Brendan Garrett, for making me look brilliant as they've they, they yet to pass. And as we know in football, the run sets up the pass. And uh, Joe Fine ran out of his fullback slot. He just kind of ran behind the line, got behind the linebacker, and a great toss by Brendan Garren. And the Clippers now uh, deep into Winsocket territory. The first drive Thanksgiving Day in the same territory, Eric Travis fumbled the ball in their very first possession. Let's see if the Clippers can capitalize on this field position. Drive started at the 30-yard line of the Clippers. Now they have it first and 10 at the 11. They're going to run it through the middle. Travis breaking off a tackle. Then he's stuck on the turf, and he's going to be gang tackled. And Boy, he's got some strong legs. He is tough to bring down on that carry through the middle. Yeah, Eric Travis, good hard running. Good tackle by the junior, Kyle Lizard that time, wrapping him up shoulder pad to shoulder pad. But Eric kept his legs moving. That's a huge gain for the Clippers, who can get a first down as the first down mark would be at the first, excuse me, at the one-yard line. As you see Brendan Garen running uh, off the sides to get the signal. Still a good thing in high school football. They come to the sideline. They don't use that headset. Got to love it. I, I do. It's just it's pure football. Second down, five to go. We'll call it the six-yard line. High backfield. Travers takes the handoff. Zigging a zag through that line of scrimmage towards the goal line. And very, very close. Looks like a first down at least. 
It'll be first down and goal to goal with a spot of the football and a chance now for the Clippers to take a couple of cracks at it. Yeah, good hard run by Eric once again, running behind the right side of that Clipper uh, offensive line. Ricky, uh, Ricky Goodrow, number 78, and number 54. Josh Pizzarelli as well uh, for the Clippers. Uh, the center, Mitch, uh, Jake Gabbery, also doing a yeoman's job on that right-hand side of the line. Kim Lazenberry also on the left-hand side of that line for the Clippers. You're in under center. High backfield, Travers takes the handoff, seals into the end zone, touchdown from one yard out. They march 70 yards in the opening drive and humble it with a 6-0 lead. Yeah, why not? Eric Travis did the bulk of the work to get him there uh, and give him the ball to reward Eric Travis. The one thing now about Cumberland is that you will see um, that they'll have different people up and down the line score at will. After the extra point try, we'll take a quick look at that touchdown run by Travers of a yard. Extra point try on its way, and uh, somehow, some way, that flooded through by Calibro, and uh, it's good for the extra point and a 7 0 Cumberland lead. As uh, we'll take a look at that replay once again. Once you see here, good kick out by Joe Fine. Nice job by uh, Trent Basie, too, to allow Travis to get right through the line there and all the backs, and obviously Eric a little happy being in the end zone. How could you not? You just scored the first touchdown in the Super Bowl. But the one thing that this Cumberland team does, and that replay uh, reiterates, is they're not only blocked by the line, but they're wide receivers, they're tight ends, and they're all very, very disciplined in their blocks, and they finish their blocks. And to be successful, as Cumberland has, running the table uh, to this point in time, that's what they're gonna need more of. So Cumberland leading, seven nothing. They do it primarily on the ground. One pass completion by Gurren upfield to find. Got about 11 yards on that pass play. Just keeping the defense honest, I think, with that throw. But they power it down the field, 70 yards. Extra point for the seven, nothing lead. High kick, fielded inside the 10 yard line. Mulvey on the return, uh, skips through a tackle and pounds his way out towards the 30. So a good gritty return, got close to 20 in first and 10 for one socket. Yeah, good hard running by the senior captain, Kyle Mulvey, who also leads the Novins defense with 62 tackles, but he gets it done offensively as well. And the one thing too about this Cumberland defense is they've only allowed 41 points during the regular season, 5.8 points per game. And in their playoff victory against West Warwick, it was basically six points until they got eight points later in the game but it's just amazing. And these playmakers on offense for Cumberland are also their playmakers on defense. A senior lady squad, this Cumberland club. Pro set backfield behind the quarterback here for Woonsocket on first and 10. They want to throw on first down. That's Bouchard. Complete out to the right. It is caught by Mulvey. And Mulvey can scamper. And he's out across that 45 towards the 46-yard line. So they come out quickly and gain close to 16. A yeah, good play call by uh, the Woonsocket, by Coach Carnell Henderson and the Woonsocket Villain Ovens. Is the last time they played it was run, run, run. They hardly passed the ball. They never had the opportunity to. So maybe here in a switch of gears from uh, 10 days ago, they come out throwing the ball. Bouchard has a very unorthodox throwing style. He's not over the top. He kind of slings it a little three-quarter-ish. Maybe a la Drew Brees a little bit, comes off the side a little bit. And... Uh, they're going to pitch it to the right side. This is Evans trying to turn it upfield. Spins off a tackle and struggles to find his way through midfield and able to advance down towards the 44 Cumberland. So a terrific run off the right side. That's two big gains on two plays now for Woonsocket. Yeah, good job, Jalen Evans. Had a th over 1,000 yards rushing this season for the Villanovans, including 14 touchdowns for this Woonsocket team. He's fast, he's athletic, and along with William Andino, the junior back, they both had big nights against Central in their semifinal victory. Jalen Evans had two touchdowns, helping the Novens punch their ticket to this game with Cumberland. And they got the needed 10 to move the stakes again. Two consecutive first downs, all set up by a nice kickoff return. Woonsocket trailing 7-0 to Cumberland here in the opening quarter. It's been a lot of fun thus far. They'll hand it off, second back through. They got another big gain as that ball all the way down to the 30-yard line. And Tino able to race through the middle and finally torn down by Travers. Yeah, good out running by Andino and Winsocket having great life. Got a nice block up front by Levi Walker on the left-hand side of that Winsocket offensive line. And uh, they get their fight. They found something different 
from when they played, as I said again, 10 days ago. And uh, they're just they're getting a push in. It's a, maybe a little bit emotional for them as well that they want to prove that they're not 32 points. Absolutely, they do have something to prove. Bouchard rolls right, throws right, and it's going to be incomplete on the far side. And Dino, the intended receiver, had to hesitate for a moment. It looked like he had actually put a hand on that. Couldn't tell if he had hauled it in or not, but it'll be second down and 10. Yeah, yeah Jake Gabry applying great pressure that time to Brett Bouchard. The Clippers did have five sacks against Winsocket the last time they did play them. And the one thing that Cumberland will do is they will dance on the offensive line in and out and pick their gaps. And Jake Gabry picked his gap brilliantly that time, forcing Bouchard to throw the ball before he wanted to. So Bouchard to work under center, second down and 10. Drop straight back the pass, airs it out right. It is caught and uh, quickly dropped after the catch is Mulvey. As uh, Mulvey tried to get away uh, from Baxter over there who tackled him down. A great tackle by Mitch Baxter right there. It's a great, another great play call by Winsocket as they're going to their skill guys. They're substituting freely. Great catch by Mulvey and Baxter just wrapping up, pushing him out of downs, but not before five yards. So. Uh, Big third down here for the Novans if you want to keep this drive going. You're almost in four down territory here, even this early in the game. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Marty, especially against a team that put up big numbers against you. You're going to take your chances, I think, offensively. They work out of the gun, and they're going to hand it off. A run of the right, that Cumberland defense, not surprised. That was busted up by Vassy as he got in there and did a terrific job. And really, there was no chance for the running back. Looked like it was Thomas. You can correct me on that on the carry. But uh, yeah, it was, I think it went to, it might have been to DeAndre Thomas, or it did go to Jalen Evans on the counter play. But Vasey, for this Cumberland team, not only is he a tight end, he also has 50 tackles for this Cumberland team. And the Novans are going to go for it on fourth down. Yep. Also, Andrew Bartlett was in on that stop from his nose tackle position. But they lost a couple of yards, so fourth down and eight to go. And offset the backfield, Bouchard wants a throw. Airs it out, throws it high, arcs it up, and it becomes a jump ball. It's going to be knocked down. Baxter knocked it down, and players continue to struggle after the play as Mulvey, well, he was triple teamed, and that would have been a dramatic catch. Yeah, that was a great try by Winsaka. Bouchard tried the pump fake. Tom Lazarus, as you see on your screen also, uh, over there coming from his free safety position. Uh, Mitch Baxter had him closed up. Tommy Laz came over to double team him. And uh, as we have said, fourth down territory for one socket. And uh, the Clipper defense bends but not break, but does not break on its first possession. And now they'll take over just about where they took over on their first possession uh, of the game. So about 40 yards of offense for one socket, yet they come up empty. That ball at about, what, the 27-yard line to start this drive for Cumberland. They lead it 7-0. Travis, the touchdown maker on that one-yard run, will carry it left side, and he's just beyond the 30-yard line towards the 31, running right at the teeth of that Woonsocka defense. Yeah, what Cumberland doing is doing best, and there's still that nothing's changed. You see Coach Chris Skirka uh, sending in the play offensively to Brendan Guerin. Paul Murphy is the offensive coordinator, a former quarterback for the Cumberland Clippers back in the day. Murphy also serves as the baseball coach here at Cumberland High School. He can multitask, huh? Yes, he can multitask. <laughs> Joe Fine of the backfield. He's run the ball a couple of times. He comes in motion on the near side. He's caught a pass. And they pitch it right. And Travis is going to be brought down in his tracks. I'll tell you what, shot out of the gun was Mulvey that makes the tackle on him for a loss back towards the 25-yard line. That is a big play, loss of six. Oh, Kyle Mulvey, great tackle. Cumberland loves to run that play. We call that the Scotty Desper sweep. They used to run it for the back Scotty Desper who played here and with much success, and Cumberland has run that play in every single game, and good job of coaching by the Winsocket coaching staff right there to sniff that play out and uh, throw them for a huge loss. Brings up third and long for the Clippers. Yeah, they need about 13 for the first down. They're going to work out of the shotgun with Garrett. Receivers to the left and right. Fine remains in the backfield to block and picks up a blitz, so they throw it downfield, and that is caught. A struggle for the first down. Zaras made the catch, and the boy's going to be close to see if he got that first down right there. Yeah, Tom Lazarus is uh, now part of the offense on certain passing situations that gives them another, uh, and they're going to give him the first down. As you see Tommy coming off the hand with the, uh, the field, excuse me, looking at his right wrist. He might have got hit on that play by a helmet or a shoulder pad going after the ball. Tom plays free safety for the Clippers, but on big passing downs, when they spread out of the backfield, Laz comes in, and a uh, good pass, good catch. 
Yeah, great play by Lazarus, and then a little bit of that reach may have picked up the first down. I think when he was reaching for the first down, that's when he may have banged up that arm in there a little bit. So they have fresh downs. Hand off, and again, they'll gain a healthy five and a carry straight ahead by Travers as he continues to just be a dominant player here in the early going. Yeah, you said early on that getting those four, five, six yards on first down is now you see Cam Lazenberry uh, limping to the trainer, Mark Levesque, out to take a look at Cam. Cam has had some leg issues during the course of the year for the Clippers. He has been playing uh, basically on one leg for the majority of the year. Great respect, as you see, the when soccer players taking the knees, the Cumberland players do. I don't know why that started or where that started, but it's a, it's a good sign of sportsmanship. It really is. You see it at the youth football level, and I know that they do it there now, and uh, I think it's kind of trickled upwards, which is great, <laughs> right? Going forward with it a little bit. You know, well, it's going to be uh, yeah, it just... At the end of the day, whether you're wearing a, a royal blue uniform or, uh, or a white uniform, you're both are trying to attain the same goal. You're both battling. You're both practicing. You started in August, you know, in two days, and now here you are in December. So it's a long season for these guys, and a uh, just reward for both of them soccer and the Cumberland football programs. I didn't know we were actually uh, in the month of December with this weather we're having here today. <laughs> it's spectacular. I'll tell you. Incredible. Down under two minutes remaining here in this opening Quarter of play, 7-0 lead for the Clippers of Cumberland. They marched 70 yards in their opening drive, second time with the football offensively, and again, they'll pick up a first down, the run over the right side by Eric Travers as he continues to find those holes. Let's give credit where it belongs to the offensive line of the Clippers. Great job early on. Oh, I agree. The right-hand side, as we said, big Ricky Goodrow, Josh Pizzarelli on that right side. Uh, Gabri is the center uh, for the Cumberland team, and they keep running right and running right. And the one thing notice as I watch the monitor here, it's always two or three guys trying to tackle Eric Travis. They cannot stop him with one man and another gain of five yards. And if it's going to be this way, it might be a long day for the Villanovans if this keeps up. Right now they trail 7-0. They did show some positive movement with the football when they had it. Only one team in the opening quarter that's gone by quickly. I backfield behind the quarterback. Aaron's going to pitch it left side. Tavers is trying to turn that corner. And that's a, another good run as he got around that edge over there. And he was finally brought down on the play. He was tackled, I believe, by Trinidad, who was able to lock him up and bring him down on the far side. Once again, credit Dan Stock and Joe Fine on that play. As Dan Stock was inside, he held off Nordby, I believe, who was coming through to, uh, excuse me, it was Kyle Mulvey who was trying to get through and get through to him. They almost ran the same toss play that Mulvey blew up on this side. He put a good block on him that time. And Joe Fine once again out of his fullback slot, getting a good, good block as well. So it's second down and about seven to go after the three yard run. They hand it off quick hit of the Fine up the middle and he borrows his way towards the first down mark as they continue to run effectively. As that ball down inside the 40 yard line. Uh, where they're gonna put 42 yard lines where they'll put it down. Joe Fine getting a handshake and a pat on the back from uh, one of his offensive linemen that time, Josh Pizzarelli. The junior Josh Pizzarelli, Pizzarelli, excuse me, and Joe Fine, another junior on this team. A lot of these skilled guys, mostly seniors, they do have a, most of this line are juniors and not seniors for the Cumberland Clippers. Again, they come immediately up to that line of scrimmage. Third down and short. Big play for the Woonsocket defense. Fine will pick up the first down. He goes over to the left side to pick it up. Well, nice decision there by Fine to find that hole as uh, there was nothing up the middle in that quick step to the left. Pick up the first down. Yeah, he did. And good good tackle that time, too, by number 19, Ken Soto from Winsocket because Joe had some daylight. He's not the most fleet of foot. However, he does know what to do with, he, with the football. And Soto kind of got an ankle tackle there. And that'll end the first quarter. First quarter does come to a close. Cumberland with the lead at 7 nothing. We'll rest our vocal cords for just a moment. 7 0 uh, Cumberland leading one socket. The Avenger Booster Club welcomes football fans to Cherry Field and wishes all teams the best of luck in today's Super Bowl. We are called to hungry. The Avenger Booster bites the test and the power stand has it covered. Coffee's strong and the cocoa is hot. Come on down and roll up with us. Dunkin' Donuts, hot dog, pizza, and soda, and candy are also available for purchase. All right, welcome right back. Don Boyle, Marty Crowley with us to my left. It certainly knows so much about Rhode Island football as we look at a lot of folks 
We're being entertained with a terrific first half here, uh, first quarter actually, uh, moving into the second quarter with Cumberland leading. Yeah, you know, the one thing too, it's a great crowd on here. It's more than just these teams, the whole communities come out. Rhode Island being such a small state, at some point in time, there are, I don't believe there are six degrees of separation. There's probably one here in the state of Rhode Island is everybody does know everybody, especially with these two bordering towns. And the one thing is we head into the second quarter, Cumberland has had the ball with the exception of one possession and that and keeping Wisconsin's offense off the field um, is another big plus here for Cumberland in the early going. And yeah, they have it first and ten, first play, second quarter, little play action, throw out to the right, it sails high and incomplete. That was intended for Mitchell Baxter off the arm of Gurman and uh, well, he had time to throw it and it just sailed on him a little bit. Yeah, Brendan Guerin had time to throw. That's only his second pass attempt of the day. The other one was a completion to Joe Fine out of the backfield. So I don't know if you get a little, uh, you sit here, you're a little rusty from now as you see Coach Chris Skirker and Frank Salisbury uh, talking to Brendan Guerin on the incompletion, trying to, uh, not sure what they're doing on the Clippers sideline, trying to get the play in in time. But as I said, you know, Garen, not sure. You, you haven't thrown the ball a lot. Uh, usually you would come over here in between to maybe uh, get him to throw on the side in between possessions. But they've had the ball with the exception of that short one socket drive. So they work out of the shotgun here on second down and 10. Garen takes the snap, wants to throw the slant, caught by Baxter. And he's brought down inside the 25 toward the 23 yard line. Pretty good tackle right there by Trinidad as he had to grab him around the leg to haul him on down. Boy, no problem throwing the ball that time as uh, uh, he hit Mitch on an up and in. Baxter took two steps, came back to the left. Baxter uh, being recruited by many college football programs. I'm on them, Marty Fines, Bryan, Bryan University, excuse me, football program looking at Mitch. He's, he's a very ter a terrific athlete and a great football player and a fine young man to boot. So they have it first down and 10. Ball inside the 25 towards the 23 yard line. Hand off, finding a quick hitter. And he adjusts, turns it out right. And he's down towards the 10 yard line. That young man continues to pick up big yardage as he just busts his way through the middle. He's more he's running more like a halfback than the fullback position. Yeah, he is. And you said it earlier, Don, down here at this end, when he busted it outside, he just did the exact same thing down here. Trent Basie actually had his back to Joe, and he kind of got pushed into the Woonsocket guy trying to get to him. And once Joe Fine saw that, he headed out to the right-hand side and caught some daylight. And the Clippers are close to knocking on the door once again. Got about 11 yards, so it's first down and 10. They can pick up a first down towards the one-yard line. They want to throw it out to the left, and that's going to be tipped and nearly picked off. Oh, boy, that was close. That was close as Travers had to leap high for that. It was nearly plucked away by Evans. Jalen yeah. Evans. Jalen Evans on the coverage that time. That ball is going for Dan Stock coming out of the slot position that yeah. time. Let's take a look at that. Uh, almost interception. Uh, maybe we'll get to it in a moment. Now, there you go, the tail end of it right there. Right, you see uh, the ball was overthrown. He had Mitch Baxter and Dan Stock out in the same uh, pattern, and Evans obviously pounding the, <laughs> pounding the ground. Uh, he had a possibility on his feet going the other way as he had real estate in front of him. And uh, Travis trying to go through the middle, and he'll draw some company, and he's inside the 10 down towards the six-yard line before he's brought down on the play. So, got about five, third down and five. Might be a little less than that with the spot of the football. Yeah, good hard runner once again by Travis. This time running off the left side. Uh, John Psyche on the left-hand side here for the Clippers. And uh, Basie as well goes back and forth from side to side. Brendan Guerin back into the huddle. Love Cumberland's uniforms wearing the Alabama Royal Blue with the numbers on the side. And this year the Clippers added the white stripe down the middle of their helmets. They are sharp looking uniforms. Woonsocket digging in defensively. Big third down play. They pitch it right side. Travers trying to find a hole. Skips back inside and he's covered up immediately as some of the big fellas along that defensive line for Woonsocket able to gobble him up and virtually no gain setting up fourth down. Decision time here for the Clippers? What, what do they do? Do they go for it? Oh, you're going. I believe you're going. As you see Tom Lazarus entering into the game, replacing Eric Travis on the huddle which is out of their pass formation. Fred Sean Ingram, number 75 for Woonsocket at that time. The one thing Cumberland did last game, which they have done different, is they did put Joe Fine in motion as a new wrinkle to this Clipper offense. 
All right, they'll spread the field with receivers to the left and right. Fine remains in the backfield to help out there. The quarterback, Garen, to work out of the gun. He'll take the snap. He looks, wants to throw out right. Got a receiver, caught, and that is a touchdown. Mitchell Baxter wide open, and he made a nice hands catch over there. Yeah, communication problems on the Winsocket side is Cumberland electing to throw to the short side of the field, and Mitch Baxter just did an up and out. And a perfectly delivered ball. Garen locked in on Baxter right away. And the Clippers are up now 13-0 with 9.09 remaining here in the first half. Very reliable. Tyler Calibro will come on to attempt the extra point. He did have some issues Thanksgiving Day, missing three extra points. Well, he'll attempt another one. That's a great job by the holder to get that yes. ball in place for the extra point kick. Yeah, I was about to say that it's funny on the extra on the special teams. Joe Fine, the fullback, is the snapper. Mitch Baxter, the wide receiver, is the holder. And you see Mitch coming off the field right there, who just caught the touchdown pass. Great job by Mitch. Cheerleaders enjoying it down below for Cumberland. They now have the 14-0 lead. We'll take another look at that touchdown reception just a moment ago. Here you see Baxter and Stocks, but out to the right. Baxter just puts a quick move on, and Andino does not stay with him. Garen delivers a perfect ball, and you can see he catches, looks down, and uh, maybe Andino thought there was more help coming over the top that time, but good job by Mitch Baxter, and good pass by Brendan Garen, who, as we alluded to, had thrown for 18 touchdowns during the regular season. So he's thrown one here today. They've rushed for another, and they have the 14-0 lead with 9.09 remaining till halftime. So Cumberland to kick it off from right to left. Overcast, guys, great temperatures. Wonderful crowd on hand. The atmosphere here at uh, East Greenwich High School here in Rhode Island is terrific. And there's your kickoff. It's high. End over end will sail down. It's going to be fielded cleanly by Andino. Andino coming out to the right. Got a block. And now he's quickly gobbled up because that young man, Mitchell Baxter, is all over the field. And on special teams, he'll make the tackle. Oh, uh, Mitch is just uh, <laughs> an amazing athlete. He, he, he just... Not only does he play football, he's also a basketball player. As uh, winter season has started here in Rhode Island, That's right. the winter coaches will be happy on both teams. There's a number of wrestlers and basketball players on both sides. After today, we'll maybe get a day or two off or uh, report to practice tomorrow. But Mitch, one of those athletes as well, and he, he does play offense, defense, special teams. And he's a, a difference maker for this Cumberland Clipper team. It's interesting you talk about these multi-sport athletes, too. they get they got to shed those football legs and yes. put on the basketball legs or the wrestling, you know, muscle or whatever it takes. Maybe cut some weight for wrestling. I don't know. Handoff. Andino trying to go left oh. side. Fumble football. The Clippers have come up with a fumble recovery. Oh, boy. Right there. They come up with a fumble recovery. And uh, Lazarus, I believe, on the fumble recovery. Yeah, Tom Lazarus with the recovery. I'm not sure who stripped that ball as Andino tried cutting the ball back off to the left-hand side. And Tommy Lazarus jumps right back on it. And... Cumberland will stay with their passing package as Tom Lazarus will stay on the field taking Eric Travis out of the huddle. Take another look and perhaps you can find out who knocked the ball free. Joe Fine looks like number eight right there, stripped Andino as the ball was on his right side and Joe reaching out the last second. Good job by Joe Fine stripping the ball. Great job by Tom Lazarus recovering the ball. Man in motion, Stock out to the right. They throw it to Stock, and Stock makes the catch. Spins off a tackle, and he's down towards oh, the 12-yard line. So now they're working with the short field as they took that fumble recovery at about the 20. They've already gone 70 for score, 68 for another, and a 14-0 lead, the Clippers on top. One thing that Cumberland does is we alluded to, they play defense, and they convert. The other night against Warwick, West Warwick turned the ball over three times. Cumberland scored every single time that West Warwick turned the ball over in the semifinal game. And if you're in socket, this is, this is basically your game right here. Even though there's still eight minutes to go in the second, you get down by three touchdowns, it's, it's a long well, road to haul. It really is. Hand off fine through the middle, and he'll drag tacklers down towards the nine-yard line. Looks like he picked up the first down with that carry as he continues to ramble effectively. Walker in on the tackle, the senior in the middle of that Woonsocket defense. Yeah, Woonsocket, no stranger to Super Bowls. As this is their third appearance in the last four years here in the state of Rhode Island, having won it in 2009 and 2010 when their games were played at Cranston Stadium. They show some power in the backfield. Now find in motion out to the right. And he'll hand it off. Travers going to the middle. Tripped up. 
getting a hand on him to bring him down was Nyang, perhaps, and that's a short gain. If Nyang didn't trip him up, he may have scooted into the end zone right there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I thought he was gone again. Good touchdown saving tackle by Sadu Nyang that time. That's just sticking his arm out and tripping Travis up, and sometimes that's all it takes is Cumberland running fine out of the motion that time and still, as you said, with a power package, still had a nice set behind uh, the quarterback, Brendan Guerin. So Clippers come up to the line of scrimmage. They're knocking on the door again, trying to cash in on a turnover. The fumble recovery by Lazarus just a moment ago. Find in motion out to the right. They stay to the backfield. Hand off Travers looking for that hole again and uh, going to be brought down. One of the athletic Woonsocka defensive players leaping over people to get after the ball carrier that time. Uh, well, you got to make sure you're going to tackle him up. Why not? Send everybody to the ball. 54 was in there. For, uh, Ryan Legas, the senior captain, was in on that tackle for the Novans, among a host of others, as you see Brennan Guerin once again coming to the sideline, getting this, uh, the offensive play from head coach Chris Skirker. Ironically, Coach Skirker and Henderson have played in this game against, not this game, on Thanksgiving Day against each other and players as players and now have been coaching against each other for at least the last four years. Karen will take the snap, swings it out left side, caught by Fine, little straight arm, tripped up, and he keeps on going. They're going to say a knee went down as he tried to turn the corner. Mulvey got enough of him to trip him up. And a little forward progress there. That's a good spot he's going to get down towards the eight-yard line. Yeah, good tackle that time by Mulvey coming up on Joe Fine, and uh, nothing tricky that time, just a little screen pass out to Mulvey as the Clippers looks like they're going to send on uh, and try to go for a field goal here. Tom Lazarus does the place kicking here for Cumberland. Also kicks off for the Clippers as they come on out. So they're going to spot that ball down at about the 14-yard line, making it a 24-yard field goal try from the near hash marks here. Lazarus with the right foot, and uh, hold on. We get a penalty flag thrown by the back judge there. So let's see. This uh, will go against the Clippers for a delay a game and back them up five, and he had put it through the uprights, too. Yeah, we had saw some, not confusion, but some delay on the Cumberland sideline when they panned to uh, Coach Skirker and the rest of his staff there uh, coming off the field of what to do, what not to do. And, uh, you know, you're up by two scores, you know, why not to try to go up by three here with the, uh, with the, uh, with a long field goal and it just backs them up five and that one was good so all right coach i can hit it from five more why not absolutely bring that ball back out towards the 24 yard line making it a 34 yard try actually the 19 yard line making it a 29 yard try here you go and that that field goal try is up and no good he missed it tough well, to tell much, from this angle much of the dismay of the cumberland bench I don't know if that went wide left or it went, didn't go over the, the goal post as uh, the Clipper coaching staff down in front of us throwing their hands up and uh, saying that it went over. And obviously, uh, they had a better angle than we did. But the officials are right there. and That's right. When push comes to shove, it's all about what the guy in the zebra says. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not going to argue with him. I, at first glance, thought it went through the upright. But well. a difficult angle here. So. Well, here's where the penalty may have cost you, uh, cost you three points. That's right. Five-yard differential, pushed it back to the 29-yard field goal try. And now we're going to uh, have another bit of a delay as they sort things out on the field with 5.21 or so remaining till halftime. And the Clippers on top of the Villanovans by the score of 14 to nothing. They've scored a touchdown on the ground, another through the air, so they're showing a lot of uh, diversity in their offense today. Yeah, the one thing they can do, and... Uh Eric Travis scoring a touchdown, and Brendan Guerin throwing to Mitch Baxter. So this Cumberland team does not rely, as we said, on just one player. Uh, multiple guys can score for this team. That was a big goal line stand a moment ago by Woonsocket. Let's see if they can cash in now and gain some energy off of that as they'll gain close to six yards on the run through the middle by Andino as Andino racing upfield and that's a healthy gain on first down for Woonsocket. I give the Woonsocket coaching staff credit too on the very first play coming back out giving the ball to Will Andino he put the last one on the deck uh, fumble by Joe Fine and uh hey kid you know it's a mistake put it behind you and here we go and a big gain of seven for Will Andino for the Woonsocket Villanovans doing the tomahawk chop out in front of us to the right. <laughs> you gotta love it the atmosphere of high school football that's Mulvey in motion 
And the pitch comes to the near right side, trying to turn the corner is Evans, and that's going to be shut down pretty quickly there by the Clippers. He got it close to the first down mark. He needed the 30-yard line for the first down as they unravel the officials who placed down the football. Yeah, Chris Hayes, linebacker, ends up wrapping up along with Jake Gabry, the nose tackle right there. It's going to be third and very, very short. And uh, good hard run in that time, as you see uh, Coach Carnell Henderson talking to his, coach, uh, his quarterback, Brett Bouchard, who took a big hit in the Thanksgiving Day game from Eric Travers and came out of the game halfway through the third, late in the third quarter with a neck injury. They threw some ice on the back of his neck, but obviously he's okay, and uh, good to see him out here playing today. After this play, I got a quick comment to make. Just an observation. We'll get to that. Bouchard will take the snap, and they'll hand it off, and they need it about a Less than a yard for the first down, and they're going to pick it up on a good, tough run through the middle. As on the carry that time was Jalen Evans again, and Evans able to pick up the first down. You talk about the which team might be bigger physically. Looks like the Clippers with a big size advantage over Winsaka. Oh, absolutely. Winsaka has some big guys on their front line. Levi Walker, Sean Ingram. But it's in the secondary and in the linebackers. We look at Cumberland's linebacking core. A lot of their tight ends, their fullbacks, and their wide receivers, and they have speed. So Cumberland's front seven, definitely bigger than Winsocket's front five. All right, Bouchard to work out of the shotgun on first down and 10. They'll hand it off. Oh. The run comes right. There is absolutely nothing going on. Big number 74 into Bartlett in on the tackle. Well, that's how you tackle right there. Andrew Bartlett, we just talked about size right that time. And Andrew Bartlett, I... Uh, walked down the halls by Andrew Bartlett at school, and he is a large man. He is my size, if not bigger, and good job wrapping him up that time as he just kind of grabbed him and wrestled him to the ground. And uh, Winsocket gains a little momentum, and then Cumlin pushes him back, and uh, time's running out here in the first half, so if you win socket, you better see if uh, you can score here quickly. Evan's probably trying to figure out what hit him. Boy, that was a big, big blow. We got a timeout on the field with 2.46 remaining till halftime. And Cumberland with the 14 to nothing lead over Woonsocket, Division II championships presented by the RIIL. Yes, the Renowned Scholastic League is uh, once again putting on, along with Citizens Bank, these are the Citizens Bank Scoop Bowls, our title sponsor here in the state of Rhode Island, also being played today in Cranston at Cranston Stadium. Well, Sal and Hendrickin are playing con concurrently, I guess, right. in the Division I uh, Super Bowl, and uh, there's a Division IV Super Bowl. North Providence will play Mount Pleasant as well up there. And a reminder also that we will have a rematch of a game earlier played earlier this year on this field in Middletown and East Greenwich at 3 o'clock on the Rhode Island Scholastic League television station, uh, Play on Sports. Yes, looking forward to it, Marty. It should be a lot of fun, and uh, I had a chance uh, to meet the athletic directors from both Middletown and uh, here from East Greenwich over the, the last month or so with some soccer tournaments that they hosted and things like that. So it, it's nice to see those two schools come together a little bit later on. Oh, absolutely. Uh, 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 Chris Cobain, the athletic director here at East Greenwich, a, a wonderful man, a former coach, a good athletic director, and uh, runs a first-class program at a, at a great facility here at East Greenwich. So it's second down and 11 out of the timeout. Bouchard in trouble, able to elude the pressure. Then that pass will be tipped, deflected, incomplete. The Hertog able to get a hand on it and knock it down. Yeah, Trent Basie applying the pressure just came right up the gut in a bull rush, and uh, nobody picked him up. And ironically, Kenny the Hertog used to be 51, has now changed his number to 15. You may see him at some point on offense out of that tight end package. You mentioned size, as you see. Brett Bouchard back talking to Coach Carnell Henderson, a fine player himself, Coach Henderson, uh, back in the day for the Woonsocket Villanovans. Yeah, he looks like a, a football player out there yeah, on the sideline. He is a football player. He's also an administrator at the high school. He's one of the vice principals at Woonsocket High School and a, a, a great educator, a great mo role model for a lot of the youth in the city of Woonsocket. Shard facing third down and 11, wants to work out of the gun, uh -oh. back to pass. Here comes the pressure, and he's going to be sacked. He's brought down the initial hit by Vassy, and then he just could not escape the rest of the pressure, and he's brought down. I didn't mean to talk over you. You heard me say, uh-oh, as soon as we saw the left, that, the left side of the Cumberland defensive line of Vasey uh, attacking here. We'll go to instant replay and look at that again. You see Vasey DeHerta coming. He just came right around Levi Walker that time. Never got a chance. And Vasey just using his speed, wrapping up Bouchard, and Bouchard goes down. Also went on that rush for the Clippers was Josh Pizzarelli, the junior left end. So it's fourth down. Poirier on to punt it away. Single safety back deep is Baxter. There's a the kick. It's high. 
Baxter will field it, has running room. He's at the 45, looks to make the move, skips to a tackle, and he's gonna be brought down in the open field after a very short gain. It was a great open field tackle by Soto. And, uh, well, Cumberland will bring down an offense back out with a chance to perhaps put this game away here in the first half. No, yeah, when Socket, every time it seems, as we said, when Socket has momentum, Cumberland's defense just steps up right away and they make plays. And uh, the last couple of plays, they run blitz off the right side, they run blitz off the left side. Uh, they move Vasey around from end to end. And you're not sure which gap they're coming to. And he just went right around Levi Walker, as we said, uh, to pick up a big sack. And now the Clippers with 146 remaining here, trying to put more points on the board. And Poirier you punt about 32 yards, by the way. Curran wants to throw out to the left. It is caught. Hazarus to the sideline, trying to get out of bounds and stop the clock down towards the 40-yard line of Woonsocket. And that's enough to move the chains on the first down throw. Yeah, it's, Bre it's Brendan Guerin, strong-arm quarterback for the Clippers, not afraid to throw the ball. And the one thing, if Cumberland does have to change gears and throw the ball, they have the ability to do it with such weapons. They'll run stock out of the slot. They'll just keep finding the back to, uh, to block as you see Mitch Baxter in the slot right. Excuse me, Baxter wide right, Basie slot right. And again, they work out of the shotgun here on first and 10. They drop the ball on the snap. Good recovery by Gurren. Finds the receiver. Lazarus smartly coming back to give his quarterback a target. And he threw it on line. And that ball down to the 40-yard line. Short gain, but well done. Oh, that, that's a sign of a, of, a senior, of a senior quarterback making a play like a senior in high school does. That ball was on the deck. He did not panic. He went down. He picked it up. He saw a couple guys coming to him. He went to his first read. And Lazarus was, was there for a gain of five. They got lucky. And again, Gurren wants to throw this time over the middle. And nice that's a play. great defensive play by Andino to knock it away from Mitchell Baxter. Yeah, Andino, good time. Uh, they connected on that play earlier. A big play to Mitch Baxter coming up and in. And Andino that time read the break and got there at the exact same time, not allowing Mitch to bring the ball back in. We'll take another look at that nice play by Andino just a moment ago. You see here Baxter coming from the far slide. Basie out of the slot, runs a square out. Baxter runs in. Good ball by Guerin. Great timing that time by Andino just to take Baxter off the ball. Here's a snap. Guerin's going to pass. It's caught by Baxter floating through the middle. Comes to the near sideline looking for a block. And they keep him inbound. And they knock him down at about the 26-yard line. So good play. Evans may have been in on the tackle there defensively from Woonsocket. Down under a minute remaining till halftime. A good play call right there by the Clippers. I haven't seen Cullen run that play an awful lot. I see Coach Skirk and now talking to uh, Mitch Baxter, Brendan Garen, along with Coach Frank Salisbury out there uh, during the timeouts. Uh, as you know, coaches, uh, unlike the professionals, they do go out and talk to their groups here in high school, and they uh, can talk to them. But a uh, good play by the Clippers on the play prior to that is uh, Mitch Baxter just came across, kind of ran a, the Wes Welker screen, if you want to call it, coming across the formation. And a big gain for the Clippers here with 56 seconds. They take their second timeout of the half. As, uh, this drive started with Tom Lazarus getting out of bounds, saving a timeout early on for the Clippers. And yeah, they pick up the first down in that well-designed play, as you mentioned. Now fresh down to work with. Really plenty of time with 56.6 seconds remaining on the clock. And the one thing, too, for Cumberland is Cam Lazenberry has not been back in the game since entering his leg. He has been replaced on the offensive line by Chris Hayes. For the, no, uh, for the Clippers. Garen takes a snap, he's back to pass. Flush out of the pocket, being chased, throws on the run, finds the receiver, Baxter makes the catch. He's immediately wrapped up by Mulvey and brought down. Boy, great play by Garen right there. He had a man in pursuit. Joe Fine couldn't hold up Levi Walker and running out to the, excuse me, it was Ryan Legas, the captain for the, for the Novans. And off his back foot, he threw that ball. Don is a, is a great throw and a great catch just to get something positive out as Cumberland takes their last time out of the half. Yeah, they'll come to the sideline, talk things over. 14 nothing lead. A couple of very impressive drives for touchdown. 70 yards to start the game. And, of course, Travers in uh, for the score from a yard out. Then they connect on the touchdown pass, capping a 68-yard yeah. drive. Two long drives for, the, for Cumberland. And uh, they have a eaten the clock up. And Sockets only had three possessions of this game. One of them resulted in a fumble. Uh, one ended up in a, uh, in a one first down, the other one two first downs before they had to, uh, before they had to kick the ball away. It's, uh, the Woonsocket coaching staff, um, you see Brian Bowie, Taji Chapman, Derek Brennan, and John Marcella, also part of this Woonsocket coaching staff. We've been together for a long time. A lot of these guys, Taji Chapman played at Woonsocket High School. 
uh, deep rooted in the community, as with Cumberland, as a lot of these guys have played also for head coach Chris Skirker. Coach Skirker in his fourth year, in his first full class of Cumberland High School, he alluded to that of the Winsocket Call, the local paper earlier this week, how it is a special group of guys for him uh, as well, being his first full class to go through. And right now, they're in the championship game. What more can you ask for, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're at the dance. As, as a coach, I always said that the hardest game was the semifinal game because all you want to do is get to the finals, get to the finals, get to the finals. And not that the finals are a letdown, but you know that just getting there is you're not happy to be there. Now you're going to go win it. And uh, both, uh, both programs, very rich tradition uh, programs as well, as we said. This is the 50th all-time meeting between these two schools. The all-time series is 28-17-4 in favor of the Clippers as we're... Uh, yeah, the little bit of delay, Marty, the reason being there's actually 44 seconds remaining here in the first half, and on the scoreboard clock here, uh, they've just fixed it to 44.4. Well, so let's credit the truck people then for having the That's right... right. For the, the graphics people downstairs and the downstairs. Uh, well done, down... Uh, at a boy, there you go. And at a girl, excuse me. A woman, a woman. At a woman. <laughs> Kerry wants to throw out to the right. It is caught. Azareth able to pick up an extra yard after the catch with a good battle down inside the 10 of the far side eight yard line. And did he get out of bounds too to stop the clock? It will stop the clock to uh, move the chains. It'll be first and goal to goal for the Clippers. Yeah, it looks like he did as there's no urgency as Brennan Garen and Mitch Baxter both coming to the side, near sideline that time. We get to play. Coming on the near sideline in front of us on the press box side here at uh, Kacheri Field here at East Greenwich. Uh, Winsocket on the far sideline with many of their faithful as well. Gurman to work under center on first and goal to goal. We'll call it the nine yard line. Hand off the fine. He's going to be bumped down. May have lost a half a yard. Couple of guys in on the tackle, including Legas, who's been all over the field defensively for Woonsocket here in the first half. Yeah, Ryan Legas, senior captain. He's a football player. Look up football players. Cumberland now hurrying up with uh, less than 30 seconds to go here in the first half. Yeah, that clock down to 15 seconds as it uh, continues to tick. There's a throw. They find a receiver. Touchdown. Baxter made the catch. Gurn with a great throw. He broke the tackle and he's in. It is 20 to nothing. Boy, I'll tell you, Cumberland, what, a, what execution. If you think about what you worked on this week, two-minute drill, two-minute drill, special teams, as you alluded to, and just making plays. As a great play right there. Great pass by Brendan Garen across the formation. Garen rolled to his right, threw back to Baxter, who caught the ball and then put his head down and went. I don't see who missed the tackle, but he did elude the tackle with nine seconds remaining to give the Clippers a 20 to nothing lead. Calibro to attempt the extra point. It's on its way. It's end over end. It is up. It is through. And now the Clippers have a 21 to nothing lead with just about nine seconds remaining in the opening. Now those half. are the ones that, that hurt you in games, more or less a championship game where, you know, when Sokka had been hanging around, hanging around, and uh, credit Cumberland's defense at this point, but now up by three scores. Uh, not that the Woonsocket's out of it, but you know, they get a long road to climb. Let's take a look at that touchdown reception by Baxter, his second of the game once again. Here you see Garen going back, and Baxter just runs up and out, and, and Dean looks like uh, Jalen Evans had a shot at him, and he just eluded Jalen Evans. You see four Woonsocket guys around there, too, as Mitch going through them. Great discipline, great pass, great catch uh, on the Cumberland part. Absolutely. I think when Socket, when they look back at that piece of tape at the end of the year, if they, if they care to, you know, a couple of caps should have been on that ball carrier there after the catch and not all on Evans' shoulders there. So they, they missed a spot to perhaps bring him down. But Bax is such a terrific player, so elusive. And those quick feet, we're watching them in slow motion too. Right. So. Well, the other thing too is, with, you know, you have to pick your poison. And I, I'm surprised that when Socket has not double teamed Mitch, but then if you double team him, somebody else will be open as Lazarus's kick is on the ground. And oh, Eric Travis just lays the wood right there on special teams to Josh Trinidad. And one thing that Eric brings, not only in offense and defense, is toughness. And he lit him up right there. And he really did. Trinidad did a pretty good job to make sure he held on to the football, that's for sure. <laughs> so time for one play here for one socket, trailing by the score of a 21 to nothing. Uh, do you take a pitch downfield? Why not give it a shot, right? Ah, uh, you, you could. Why, you know, Bouchard's got a, even though he has an unconventional uh, throwing style, he does have a strong arm, Brett Bouchard. You see Tom Lazarus and Dan Stock are already a good 20 yards off the, uh, off the, off the, off the ball. 
It's now the Winsaka play. Oh, Winsaka will take a timeout. Carnell Henderson will come out and decide whether he wants to take a knee or throw something up in the past. They have also used uh, number 88, the junior Kyle Lizard tight ends uh, in this formation as well. And uh, great crowd on hand as uh, you can see the Cumberland cheerleaders hustling uh, in the bench. The Winsaka band up in the stands. Yeah. Definite contrast in colors between the Novins maroon and the Clippers royal blue. And the one thing, too, about Winsocket High School, one of the few schools still with a Native American name, for a better lack of words. And you drive by uh, Barry Fieldhouse where they are, and Thundermist, the chief Thundermist, is prominently figured on the side of their Fieldhouse and uh, doing the tomahawk chop. Their mascot is a Native American, as we say. Oh, that's the best way I can put it. Yeah. Absolutely. It's well done. I like the stories. I'm listening with <laughs> fascination, that's for sure. <laughs> Bryant University were the uh, Indians at one point. They are now the Bryant Bulldogs. So it could be the final play here in the first half as uh, Bouchard had nowhere to go as the Clippers bust in immediately. And that is going to do it in your first half as, again, into Bartlett, who's made a couple of nice plays out there. Uh, making the tackle. So through one half, the Clippers with a 21 nothing lead over Woonsocket. And Marty, does it surprise you as we head to break? Uh, yes and no. I mean, come, I've seen Cumberland play all year. I've watched Woonsocket play for a good portion of the year. And Cumberland is, is a very good football team. And they're seniors, and they have senior playmakers. Woonsocket, not sure if they, if they have very good playmakers. They have good running backs in Andino and in Evans and a great quarterback in Bouchard. Cumberland's size, Cumberland's skill is why we're up 21 nothing. And Cumberland's defense, which has pitched shutout, they pitched four shutouts during the course of the year, is why they're up 21 to nothing right now. Yeah, there. you're right. That defense is terrific. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll give you a wide view shot of all the stuff taking place here at East Greenwich High School. It's halftime, Division II championship game. Cumberland with the lead, 21 nothing over Woonsocket.
All right, welcome right back here to uh, East Greenwich High School in uh, East Greenwich, Rhode Island, the site of the Division II Rhode Island State Championship football game. Halftime score, 21-0, Cumberland on top of one socket. Marty, you put together some uh, outstanding statistical information. Why don't we take a quick peek at that? Well, thanks to my friends at Radio Station WON AM 1240, Woonsocket, who uh, <laughs> have put some stats. Uh, let's look at uh, Woonsocket first. Uh, Jalen Evans only has 12 yards rushing on five carries, when, when William Andino has two rushes, 21 carries, including a fumble, and that's basically it for the Woonsocket offense. On the other side, though, for the Clippers, uh, let's start with uh, Brendan Guerin, 11 for 14, 92 yards. Five of those complete to Mitch Baxter for 44 yards, including two touchdowns. And Tom Lazarus has four catches for 40 yards. As you see, the Clippers stretching out, out on the field. Uh, Rushing-wise for the Clippers, Eric Travis, uh, 13 carries, 58 yards, uh, and a touchdown. Uh, um, Joe Fine, seven carries, 34 yards. And Dan Stock, uh, one carry for three yards. So... Uh, Come on, do it through the air and on the ground. Yeah, we take a look at that first highlight as they score their touchdown in that opening drive going 70 yards when you talk about uh, this Cumberland team and uh, just a simple dive off the right side. That's all it was for Travis. And uh, here you see the second touchdown and up in and out by Baxter and Andino just kind of fell asleep. Maybe thought there was help there for coverage and there wasn't. And a great pass by uh, Garen to Baxter. And then the uh, third touchdown uh, late in the half. Uh, you'll see once again here. I'm sorry, there's a handoff, inside handoff to Joe Fine. Good gang tapping up front by one socket. Fine going nowhere as this is the end of the first half. Come on in the hurry up offense. You see the guys looking at their uh, Tom Lazarus with some confusion. Dan Stock now goes in motion right. Everybody's off on the right hand side, and Garen's going to come back across the formation here to Baxter on the left hand side and get the touchdown out of this. Great pitch, great catch right there. Missed tackle by Jalen Evans, and Mitch Baxter goes in. You see Baxter and Dan Stock are the only two guys on this side of the formation. Last time Cumberland had the ball on their side, they went to Baxter on the near side. So good job by uh, offense coordinator Paul Murphy uh, changing it up here uh, at the end of the first half, and the Clippers have a 21-0 uh, lead here. Uh, heading into the second half, and uh, they'll be kicking off when Saka will be receiving the ball. Yeah, one of the positives for one socket they will receive the football here to start the second half. And I read somewhere a long time ago, if you scored touchdown on that opening drive second half, 70% of the time, you win the football game. I don't know if that's going to hold true when Socket <laughs> cashes in here on a drive downfield. they got a long way to go, but certainly will help them out emotionally. A yeah, long way to go. A lot of football left. Uh, a lot of football left here. Uh, his last... Uh, Time these two teams played, oh, come to one 32 nothing, and the second half is underway. It's a short kickoff, and it's going to be returned effectively by Woonsocket. It's moved out by Torres, as Torres on a good return there, took it at about the 20 yard line, able to ramble out beyond the 40 towards the 43, and they'll have it first and 10. A short kick that time by Cumlin. I don't know if uh, Tom Lazarus just miskicked it and he got under a little bit as that ball uh, went up in front of us, is warming up down in front of us uh, as Brendan Guerin and the backup quarterback, Tyler Calibro, uh, warming up, getting ready uh, to go in the second half. And Saka starts uh, with his best starting position of the day, just uh, the notes of the ball just inside the 45-yard line of one socket. Well, they've tried to work out of the shotgun on occasion in passing situations without much success as that uh, Cumberland defense has been so strong here this afternoon, pitching the shutout through a half in the 21-0 lead. They hand it off Andino, and there's a great example of the dominance along that defensive front line for Cumberland as they get in there quickly as Pizzarelli made the tackle. Yeah, Pizzarelli and Gabri both time in that tackle. You know, if you're Chris Skirka, uh, you're going to halftime, and the first thing you say is, fellas, there's a lot of game left here. I don't care what happened last week. I don't care what happened in the first two quarters. It's about what you're going to do in the next 12 minutes to get you to the next 12 minutes. And a good start on defense for the Clippers here in the second half. So Wonsaki coming up to the line of scrimmage. As Anovins will send a couple of wide outs to the near side. Bouchard to work out of the shotgun on a second down and about 12 to go. Shard takes a snap, steps up in the pocket. Now he wants to throw, finds a receiver. That's a big gainer down inside the 40 to 38. Their biggest play from the line of scrimmage is Holman made the catch through the middle. He ran a terrific route. How about Bouchard stepping up in the pocket? Good job by Bouchard that time. As you said, stepped up in the pocket. And the one thing when Saka did early on, they came out throwing the ball with success. The first play of the game was a nice pass and catch. And once again, when Saka now trying to change up gears and they're gonna need more of that if they're gonna try to stay in this game. 
So they come up to the line of scrimmage, down by 21. They have it first and 10 at the 38-yard line. Bouchard again the work out of the gun with a couple of receivers to the right. They're going to hand it off. And Dino scampering through the middle, picking a hole and down inside the 30 towards the 29-yard line. About a yard shy of the first down as a good nine-yard run by Andino. Here's he back on that play action on that pass. Good job, as you said, of stepping in the pocket with Bouchard. You see he kind of slings it from the side. He sat right in the zone with Holman and a nice open field catch uh, for Winsaka to put him in the position that they're in. So now they come up to the line of scrimmage, second down. Long yard to go for the first down as Bouchard again to work out of the shotgun. They dig in defensively. There's Cumberland. Bouchard looks right, nothing going on, throws it out left, and he'll airmail that one out of play as the pressure was coming from Fine, who got into that backfield. Yeah, Joe Fine that time just came off the left end, and I was about to say that when Saka might have found something as running in the tackles, and that pass, Bouchard did step up in the pocket through the tackles as well, and they found the seam as Clippers were applying pressure from the outside. That time they made the adjustment, came back from the inside, and forced Bouchard to get rid of that ball before he wanted to. I do have an update. The LaSalle is up 14-0 on Hendrick in that game, the Division I game at Cranston Stadium late in the first half. Brett Bouchard, the quarterback, to work out of the gun. Third down and about a yard and a half to go for the first down. Triple threats to the right, one in the backfield. That's Evans. He's back to pass Bouchard. Here comes the oh. pressure. Hitting the ball is free. It was knocked free by Vasey, and it's going to be recovered by Cumberland. Is that defense big again? Bartlett on the fumble recovery. Oh, boy. Trent Vasey had a clear path to the quarterback. Bouchard never saw him coming. Vasey just went out, made sure the ball did not get up. That's a fumble, and credit Bartlett jumping on that ball. You see right here, Vasey, nobody touches him. Bouchard never saw him. And the ball hits the deck, and then it's a, it's a scramble for it. And credit, credit Bartlett out hustling Jalen Evans to get to that ball and give the Clippers the ball back here now early in the second half. Second time when Socket has fumbled it away here today. They hand it off to Fine. Joe Fine has a hole, comes out to the left side and able to bring it close to 10 yards down towards the 46-yard line as they continue to grind it out on the ground with much success. Big gains on first down. Boy, that makes the play calling so easy, doesn't it, Marty? It, when you it, game? it, it yeah. changes the whole, it, it opens up your playbook. You want to take a shot up top, take a shot up top. You want to hand it off, get your first down and move, you can do it. You're right, you just, it opens up the possibilities. And the way Cumberland's going, why are you going to change anything that you need to? They offset the backfield, wing out to the left side. Gurren, who has thrown a couple of touchdown passes under center, they hand it off, and Travers going through the middle, has got the first down, picks his way toward the 42-yard line. A couple of guys in on the tackle, for one socket, including Fernandez, who helped out there as part of that uh, defensive interior. Yeah, good job by Winsaka that time, limiting Eric Travers to a gain of only three or four yards right there. As uh, Garen getting a signal from Coach Skirk, you see the Cumberland cheerleaders on the near sideline of the track in their uh, blue and whites with the silver pom-poms. A great crowd on hand. Uh, the Cumberland faithful, uh, a lot of the mothers sitting in front of the press box and you know, it's, they're rubbing their hands and they're just hoping, 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 waiting for that <laughs> clock to go down to zero. Pitch left side, run short side. Travers trying to turn it down the sideline and they're gonna be bumped out of bound. Looked like he was going for a bit further, but the defensive play made by Mulvey along the sideline here. He's been all over the field, one of the captains for Woonsocket. Yeah, Mulvey with 62 tackles during the regular season. Kyle Mulvey, he also splits time as the wide out slash H-back, if you'll call it, for the Coach Carnell Henderson and the Woonsocket Villanovans. And uh, coming out, but you know, if, if, if we're calling Mulvey a lot, uh, coming out of his backfield making tackles as in Orandino, it's usually not a good sign if your safeties are coming up making tackles. Yeah, you're so right. Travers got five on that carry right there. It's been a, 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 the story of the day, the running attack of Cumberland. They're going to try it again with Fine, and there's a great example as he's got the first down and a whole bunch more. Takes a pile to the 25-yard line. Well, that young man's earning his dinner with his running attack here oh, this afternoon. Dinner and maybe breakfast tomorrow is that time he followed Big Ricky Goodrow, number 78. He just put his hand on his back and gave him the tap of which way he was going. Ricky kicked out. Joe picked up another seven or eight yards right there. They're taking some time off the clock, looking to put more up on the board, leading it 21-0. That was your halftime score as Baxter, with a couple of touchdown catches, goes wide to the right side. Travers with the other touchdown in the, the game for Cumberland. 
Now Fine in motion, pitch right side. Travers trying to turn it around the block of Fine, and he's down inside the 20. This one might be coming back. There's a penalty marker down back at the 29-yard line. <laughs> Kyle Mulvey kind of selling his case to the official right there. It was jumping up and down that Joe Fine had held him, and the flag finally did come in late to spring Eric Travis. As, however, that's the second time Cummins run that play today, the old Scotty Despa sweep, we call it, where they try to throw the ball out to the wing. And uh, both times, Masaka has sniffed it out. That time with the aid of a holding penalty against Joe Fine. <laughs> yeah, spot foul, too, from the spot of the infraction. Brings the ball back out to the 39. Makes it first down at about a country mile to go. Yes. And you need about, what, 25 or so here. First down and maybe the next down over, which would be Warwick, I believe, for the Cumberland <laughs> to get there. When Socket and their road whites with the Wisconsin W on their helmets as well. Another classic uniform look. I'm a big classic uniform I guy. can tell. You, you have them all identified. I love it. Darren wants a throw outright. It is caught. Baxter trying to find an escape route, and he's going to be brought down immediately on the gang tackle on the far side as Andino the first to get to him. And they get a little bit back and sets up second down and uh, becomes more manageable now uh, for the Clippers. Yeah, what that does too is that exactly what I was about to say, that now that changes your playbook again with a gain of even seven or eight yards right there. Now it's okay, now it's second and whatever. And you're definitely in four down territory here, up by three scores, and basically you have 50, three plays to make 15 yards if you're the Clippers. So let's see what they do. They're going to work out of the shotgun with uh, Brendan Gerwin, the quarterback. Gerwin. Takes a snap. He's been accurate. Out left. Stock. Whoop. He forgot something. Dropped the football. That is ruled an incomplete forward pass. Yeah, that's a good call. You see Dan Stock kind of shrugging his shoulders and throwing his arm down as he was already heading upfield before he had the ball. He took his eye off the ball and he was already gone. He had a nice wall in front of him. That's that same bubble screen they ran to Mitch Baxter coming from the other side of the field earlier um, in this game. Excuse me, last quarter if my mind does not evade me well, at this yes, point. It, 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 it goes with me too, Marty. <laughs> Doesn't make me a All bad guy. the time. That's right. Not at all. Not at all. 21 nothing. Cumberland leading. Stock in motion. Going back to pass. Third down. They need about 18. They throw it downfield. They find a receiver. It is caught as Vasey found a little opening in the tackle eventually made by Kenneth Soto. But that's a long gain inside the 10 towards the 7 yard line. You know, I was just saying to myself the play before where Vasey was out here. I said they haven't thrown to the tight end Vasey yet. When are they going to throw to him? Well, you pick and choose your spots right there. If you're riding the run, you're riding Travis, you're riding Baxter, so you're throwing to Lazarus, let's throw it to our tight end, change it up, and good for a clipper for us now. Boy, Brendan Garrett, very impressive today. Uh, a pilot in this clipper offense. Uh, outside of that, his first throw, he's been on target with everything else. Uh, he split the backfield behind the quarterback, Garen. You're right. He has uh, done a nice job daring this offense. They hand it off to Fine, and they find a way. They solve him. They bring him down, maybe a <laughs> yard gain on the forward roll. Up to make the tackle for one socket was Cahill, Brian Cahill, one of the captains. He's a senior. That big pass play setting up this opportunity a moment ago for the Clippers here. Great protection, good kick out by Joe Fine, throwing a pass on Good throw by Brendan Garen. Facey, a 6-3 tight end, leads his feet to get that ball and a good pass, good catch by uh, Garen and Facey. They had the uh, coverage people all around him, too. Pitch to the near side. Travis trying to turn it to the five toward the pylon. Touchdown. That's a seven-yarder. His second touchdown carry today, and the lead grows to 27-0, Cumberland. Boy, credit Joe Fine with that, too, as we'll see when we get to the replay. Joe Fine with a great block as he ends up pinning the corner. Uh, did not allow Nick Fernandez to have the opportunity. Mitch Baxter out front blocking once again. So impressive on the edges once again with the blocking, and uh, now they'll go for the extra point in a moment here. You'll but here's see that here run. the pitch to Travis, and here's Fine right there. Throws the block just to allow uh, Travis to scamper into the end zone, and Travis picks up his second touchdown of the day. Calibro will now come on to attempt the extra point. And it's on its way, and it is good. So the lead grows, 28 to nothing. Cumberland with the lead over one socket. Remember, they did compete on Thanksgiving Day with Cumberland with a lopsided victory, and, uh, well, they're doing it again here today. They're consistent. Same formula, just defense, uh, 
very effective. They've, they've capitalized on uh, both when soccer, excuse me, first turnover did not capitalize on whoever this one they did. Scoring points off the turnover. They did it in their semifinal game against West Warwick. And they're doing it in all phases of the game as uh, John Psyche is down on the field being looked at by the trainer Mark Levesque. And ironically, Mark, the trainer, works for both Woonsocket and Cumberland High School based out of Northern Rhode Island. Mark does a great job. He's been the trainer for a lot of uh, local high schools for close to 30 years now, volunteering his time. And uh, a gentleman, as he looks at uh, like the leg of John's uh, psyche, John also a baseball player and basketball player, I believe, at Cumberland High School. Well, hopefully he'll be okay as uh, we take a look at all the things taking place here in East Greenwich. And, well, right now, uh, commanding lead for Cumberland. You know, talk about the the state of football overall here in the in the state of Rhode Island. I, I got a chance to witness it really for the first time ever uh, last week when LaSalle won their semifinal round game. Very impressed with that LaSalle football program and their facility at LaSalle Academy. Oh, Incredible. It is, a, it is a college campus here in the state yep. of Rhode Island with, uh, with Cronin Field and Lucimini Field there in Providence. Uh, not only the football field, but the baseball field, the, uh, a track. Back, the whole facility, they've added a new science wing on to that facility. And up back, they're going to redo the softball field. I'm a softball wow. coach, so hopefully, not a LaSalle, <laughs> but actually in Cumberland, but hopefully they uh, do that. But yeah, it's a beautiful facility. And a lot of facilities here now, football facilities, North Smithfield has turf. Middletown at the Gaudette Middle School. Beautiful, has beautiful facility. Beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, I believe Salve Regina also helped yeah, that's finance right. that's that right. as well. Uh, that it's almost like the Boise State blue, but you know, football in Rhode Island here is strong. Division two, with two divisions, and they have to play a quarterfinal game as the top four on each side make it. So they go quarters, semis, and when Socket won their quarterfinal game by going for a two-point conversion in overtime to get them to the semis, and they shut out Central, and here they are. Absolutely, right now they have an uphill battle, trailing 28 nothing. And Dino retrieved the kickoff. He's across the 20 yard line and towards the 22. A penalty marker thrown to the near side here. So the flag comes out, thrown down at about the 31. And we'll find out what the result of that is on the return here. Yeah, that flag came from a, looks like it's, it's gonna be a hold against one socket. That flag came from the back judge from the other side of the play. And also here, as uh, we wait the outcome of this penalty, that the number one seed, Johnson, was knocked out in the first round by Central trying to go for a two-point conversion really? wow. instead of going for the tie at home and then let your defense do they went for the win and they failed and central upset them and the number one team from the other side the 2a side was gone just like that so the penalty against one socket and they're backed up inside their 15 i believe a hole they actually didn't pay attention to the official down below so i do apologize but the 10 yard penalty it looks like and the they're going to have to start to inside the room 15. Bouchard calls his own number, goes straight ahead. And he's out to about the 16-yard line or so. We're at second down here for Woonsocket. And, boy, if they want to get back into this ball game, they need to put together the impressive drive right now. They really yeah, do. Yeah, impressively and also quickly with 5.09 yeah. remaining here in the third quarter is the one thing Cumberland has also done. When they've had the ball, they've been very prudent. Excuse me, not, not prudent and they put together two long drives to go to 70 and a 68 yarder in the first half, and they're taking a lot of time off the clock as well. Bouchard had to work out of the gun, triple threats to the near right side. They've had some success throwing the football here against this Cumberland defense. A little pump fake, throw left, deflected, intercepted, and down towards the goal line, towards the one yard line on the interception is the hurt tag. As, oh boy, he just put up the paw on the deflection and made the catch. Yeah, I think Trent Basie might have got the Indeed. deflect on that. And uh, Kenny, De, Kenny DeHurntog, as we said, switched his number. Here on the replay, there's just a bull rush. Basie does jump, gets his hands up. Good job by Kenny DeHurntog, as you see in the air, coming down with the ball. And uh, Bouchard with a touchdown saving tackle there for the Novens. That's a big fella he had to bring down too, but uh, athletic play leading to this goal, the goal situation. First and goal to goal. And that ball down towards the, looks like the three yard line from here. They're gonna hand it off and the run goes left side. Travers trying to tug it along and he's gonna be brought down to about the three or so, very difficult to tell from this angle. Second down and goal to goal. Good job running by Eric Travis. I wouldn't be surprised here to see maybe Joe Fine get the ball, uh, try to, uh, to show the diversity here, maybe give Joe Fine the, uh, the quick handoff as he's been pretty successful with it 
or uh, maybe it's to see Garen coming back to the huddle. But uh, my call would be to go to Joe Fine on this play just to change it up, maybe spread it out a little bit and see if you can get Joe in the, uh, in the scoring column. Cumberland team with just one loss during the regular season. We'll speak of that in a moment. High backfield behind the quarterback. Gurren has done a terrific job at the helm. Hands it off, and uh, Travers trying to go straight ahead, fighting for that goal line, and he's going to be brought down shy of the goal he's line. In. No, he's in for the touchdown with that second effort. A three-yard touchdown run. Yeah, the far official uh, looked, at, looked at Eric Travers, looked behind him, looked at where the pylon was, said you're in, and just like... And just like that, it's now 34 nothing. Nothing fancy, right behind Joe Fine. Off the right-hand side of the line, Travis keeps his feet moving. Good block right there by number 54, Josh Pizzarelli. See on the inside guy, not allowing him to get there. You see Mitch Baxter, Joe Fine celebrating, the official putting his hands up, and it's 34 nothing. Extra point is up on the way, and it's good for a 35 nothing Cumberland lead with 345 remaining here in the third quarter at Kacheri Field in beautiful East Greenwich, Rhode Island. Yeah, and they have cashed in now on two consecutive turnovers by Woonsocket. The fumble recovery turned into points. The interception a moment ago turned into points and a lopsided score at 35 nothing. A light breeze starting to blow. Overcast guys all day and a good look at Cumberland down below. You know, when you talk about this Cumberland team with just one regular season loss, did they expect to be here in this game, you think, in 2012? Uh, I, I, think, I think they did. I think they, they attended... To, to be here. I think with this class that Coach Strucker has had uh, up this senior year, as freshmen, they won freshman state title, and moving right along up, I, I believe they did expect to be here. Their only loss was in the preseason challenge to Division I Cranston That's West right. uh, at Cranston Stadium. They have run the table in Division II, and a lot of these guys, these starters, have not played four full quarters of football because they have not had to. Usually halfway through the third or the fourth, he lets his bench in to play. And, uh, talking to the guys in school this week, they said they will finish this game, however, the last one of their high school career. Mulvey on the return, looking for a hole across the 20, <laughs> spun around and brought down, brought back down inside the 20 yard line. What <laughs> a pretty good play by Cumberland's Eric Travers, who's been all over the oh, he, field. You know what? He's, he's a tough, tough kid, as his wrestling coach, Steve Gordon, will tell you. Although I don't think anybody who has ever wrestled with Steve is not tough. Uh, perennial power here wrestling in the state of Rhode Island. But Eric, just he, he likes to hit people. He's only been a two-year player. He did not play his freshman or sophomore year. You know, wow. His battles from shoulder injuries this year, catching stingers and his hands going numb because of, uh, you know, he just got a football injury. But once again, his second big hit on special teams for Eric Travers. You can tell, uh, I was going to mention, is he a wrestler after he scored his third touchdown of the game? Because that was a wrestling move to get into the end zone. It <laughs> yes, certainly it was. was. <laughs> All right, Bouchard, handoff Evans. Evans gobbled up. No gain. Got it back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. I mean, when you run into Andrew Bartlett and company, you're not going anywhere. No, they proved that Cumberland, uh, Cumberland's made everything that Winsocket has done. Cumberland has made the proper adjustment and not let him Winsocket get going. And if you're Winsocket now down 35 nothing late here in the third quarter, um, it, barring a uh, disaster or a miracle, it looks like this will be Cumberland's Super Bowl to win. 3.05 remaining in the third. Winsocket coming up to the line of scrimmage. Poirier comes to the near side, short side of the field. And Dino goes far left as a slot receiver. As Bouchard to work out of the gun. Evans in the backfield. As a snap, wants a throw. Now he's going to run. He's in trouble, and they're going to uh, no, not get him. Now he fumbles the football. It was stripped, and it looks like the Clippers may have come up with a fumble recovery. They have not made the indication yet, but it looks like they have, or have they? They're going to no, put it back down. No, Cumberland, uh, yeah, when no, got it back. Ball. Once again, what, what coach Chris Gerker, who is also the defensive coordinator, is a defensive, as a defensive-minded coach. As we see the replay, as you see Basie to Hurtog, Pizzarelli coming in at him. Good push up front by Bartlett, hustling after the ball. Oh, and it was Chris Hayes who knocked the ball loose right there. Good recovery by number 75, Sean Ingram on that play for the Novens, the lineman. Yeah, I don't know how he got it. I, I don't either, as there are, there are two Cumberland guys going after that ball. So it'll be third down. They actually got about a yard on that play, so we'll call it third and about nine. I don't know how they did that. Bouchard's gonna rifle one out to the right. It is caught. And they're going to get enough yardage for the first down as Mulvey is bumped to the sideline here. As he, uh, he was hit pretty good on the play that time around by Hayes. 
But they get the first down to about the 36-yard line. Great move by Mulvey. You see him and Mitch Baxter were locked up one-on-one and a little foot dance going on right there. And good speed and burst by Mulvey right in front of the Clipper bench to pick up the first down. Nice pass, nice catch. The one thing I was alluding to is Coach Skrecker has coached at St. Rayfield Academy, also at Dean Junior College up in Franklin, Mass. There's the one socket, uh, the, the Villanovan, uh, the mascot, down in front of the band. Uh, we're in full headdress on Sunday. But Coach Skirker, a defensive-minded coach for these Cumberland Clippers. Mulvey will have single coverage on the right. Baxter has the coverage on it. Bouchard out of the gun. He's back to pass. Scans, looks, throws left. Antino catch, turns it upfield, trying to outrace Hayes. Baxter comes up to clobber him and knock him down, but another positive gain. Good enough for the first down. An 11-yard pass play. And when Sockwood, back-to-back first down possessions here in the third quarter, trying to show life, trying to get on the scoreboard and just build on that as you head into the fourth quarter with the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Bouchard does have a strong arm, and I was talking with my uh, cohorts from the radio station in Woonsocket at halftime, and you know, they came out throwing, they got some first downs, and then they got away from that. Uh, Credit Cumberland's defense or uh, Woonsocket's not able to execute on offense. Right now, they're pushing it downfield. This drive started inside their own 20-yard line after a penalty on the kickoff. Oh, turn. oh and Dino, how do you do? Wow, he was just whacked on down by Bartlett again as he just hovered over him to bring him down. We've seen this today. We'll see it again. Andrew Bartlett just bum-rushed and uh, blew right by the center right there. And, uh, you know, you see uh, Trent Basie, the Cumberland guys, you know, they just, every time they make a play, they, and the one thing is Coach Chris Skirk will tell you, this team, they feed off each other. They don't want to be superstars. They want to be part of a family. And right now, uh, the family is doing rather well. You can still see the colors of autumn on the trees and the backdrop as, uh, yes, a few leaves still around here <laughs> in this uh, northeast state of Rhode Island. Bouchard wants to throw, brings it down, now throws, and he throws up a... Lob that's going to be intercepted and returned the other way. Lazarus on the interception, and he's back out to the 45. Was overthrown. Lazarus with a nice catch earlier today and an interception there, and yet another turnover by Woonsocket. A third turnover of the day right there for Woonsocket. Last time we saw it too when Bouchard went to the pump fake, there were issues on the play, and same thing as there as the ball was underthrown. There is a slight wind. He did throw into a slight wind there. As you see, Lazarus throwing to triple coverage. Eric Travis uh, was there also along with Hayes. And uh, Tom Lazarus picks up the ball and he uh, picks up 10 and he's run out of bounds. Yeah, pass intended for Poirier. Lazarus having a big game, a fumble recovery back in the first half, a nice reception in the first half, an interception here in the second half. Pitch left side, Travers trying to turn the corner. He's got fine as a blocker out front, bumps it to the outside. Now looking for a move, slips neatly through a tackle attempt and all the way down to the 40 strike. That was terrific on the run of about 18. Oh, big game right there by Eric Travis. Good patience as you see the Cumberland sideline. Uh, Eric getting uh, up in front of the Cumberland sideline. They're looking at him now, trying to figure out where he is. And uh, that will do it, I believe, for the end of the third quarter, that play. And uh, Cumberland with a 35-0 lead. Yep, they've been dominating. They've forced now four turnovers. They've cashed in on those turnovers. They have built a 35-0 advantage. We'll be back with the fourth quarter right after this. Not 
All right, welcome right back here as we settle in for the fourth quarter of this Division II championship game. Cumberland on top of Woonsocket, 35 nothing. My pleasure to have uh, Marty Crowley alongside and certainly appreciate all your wisdom, insight, and uh, your knowledge of the history of these two fine football programs. Well, that's what Marty. it is. It's, uh, it's a small state. There's a lot of history between both these programs. As Now, Dan Stock now pushes the ball out to the right-hand side. Big uh, pickup for Dan Stock, good for a first down for Cumberland. But, you know, between these two programs, these two neighbor border rivals who uh, have been going at it, not only in football for 50 years, but many other sports as well. And Brown is a small state. And, you know, as you and I spoke on the phone about Thanksgiving Day rivalries, Connecticut, Mass, Rhode Island, I, you go to New England and people look at you like you have three heads. <laughs> I know. But it's football, true. Thanksgiving? But uh, what, what would life be here in the Northeast without football? Absolutely. It's uh, one of my favorite days, the Thanksgiving Day football game. And the Thanksgiving Eve football game still a pretty good. I backfield. Travers, nope, that stock taking a hand off, and he goes over the right side, getting a chance to show his ball-carrying skills. He's a senior. Is Danny Stock. I'm sure at this point in time now, too, the Cumberland coaching staff is maybe sitting here with a 35 to nothing lead saying, Stock hasn't gotten the end zone yet. Eric Travis has three TDs. Maybe let's give another guy a shot to punch it in and say he's going to touchdown on, on, in a Super Bowl. And Baxter's got a couple of touchdown catches, so why not get another involved, right? Eric Travis has three on the ground. Lazarus with a fumble recovery, an interception, a reception. He's wide to left. He'll be on the stat sheet for his great work, both sides of the ball. Stock takes a handoff, going left side, trying to bust it to the outside towards the 15, trying to turn that corner. He does towards the pylon, and they're going to say, I believe, he may have gone out of bounds towards the one-yard line. He nearly got it right there in a terrific run. They'll be first down and goal to goal. Everybody on the Cumberland side saying touchdown, but the guy who matters the most did not put his hands up as Dan Stock. You know, this, this Cumberland team is so versatile, and it's just, you know, Dan Stock hasn't got his number called a lot today because it's been Eric Travis, and Eric's been going so well that they haven't really had a ride, Dan. Uh, Dan gives them another dimension as well uh, as Eric Travis and good hard running that time. Credit Cumberland's offensive line too. Uh, playing without Cam Lassenberry who went out hurt in the first half and Chris Hayes, number 52, filling in uh, admirably for him at his left tackle spot. Derwin under center, stock to tail back in the eye. And off stock, looking for a hole. Needs two for the touchdown. He tried to borrow his way in, no indication yet. That was about a 21 yard run by stock to set up this opportunity down inside the one yard line. It'll be second down and goal to goal. Yeah, you know, they could have given the ball to Joe Fine there, but Joe Fine being a junior, Dan Stock being a senior. Uh, not that Joe may not get the ball on this play, but a, a class. Uh, Class act by this Cumberland coaching staff, Paul Murphy, Chris Skurka on the offensive side um, in their headsets. Uh, you know, I talked to Coach Skurka Thanksgiving Day. At one point they said, okay, who hasn't scored yet? And they want to make sure that you know, people do uh, spread the wealth around. Make them all feel good. Give them a memory to take home. Going to work under center. Hand off, fine, goes straight ahead. Bounces around, and he's in for the touchdown from a yard out. It grows the 41 nothing. Cumberland over Woonsocket this Division II championship game. Yeah, Dan Stock did most of the work to get it down there, but, you know, uh, for the chance to get in, as we watch the replay, just the, hand, the quick wham handoff to Joe Fine. Joe lowers his shoulders, Puts his head down and runs right behind Pizzarelli, number 54 right there. 78, Ricky Goodrow, 52, Chris Hayes. Gets into the end zone and a, a pat on the back from Chris Hayes right there and Mitch Baxter alongside as well. Back to the holder, Calibro, to attempt the extra point. Good snap, ball down, kick up. And it is through. It's 42 to nothing with 9.29 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Well, we'll talk it now playing for a bit of pride. Uh, starting with this next drive. Yeah, that, that's all really you, you can play for right here is a, a penalty flag just came out uh, later. Looks like it might be unsportsmanlike, uh, possibly against Cumberland as that flag was thrown at the break of the uh, extra point. Now you mentioned the score 42 nothing. How deep will Cumberland go on their roster sheet now? How far down on the depth chart will Woonsocket go in a situation like this here in the fourth quarter? Well, that's, I, that's the one thing that you, you're not sure here is, you know, uh, obviously if you coach Chris Strickey, do you want the shutout? Absolutely. <laughs> As a coach, you want to yeah. say that you whitewash them. A at what extent, though? At some point, uh, you may see Brendan Guerin come out of the game, and you may see Tyler Calibro, also the backup quarterback, who's gotten a lot of reps this year for Coach Chris Strickey, to get some 
Super Bowl experience, whether it's against a first or a second unit, as you see Coach Carnell Henderson uh, over on the sideline. Uh, Winsaka's special teams coach inside the huddle talking to his guys. And if you're Winsaka, you're just going to keep coaching your guys up. I've been on the Winsaka and Cumberland sideline in both these situations and games, and both these coaching staffs will continue to coach their kids to the final whistle. With 9.29 remaining here in the fourth quarter, I would expect no different from Carnell Henderson on the Winsaka sideline. So in this Division II Super Bowl, 42-0, Cumberland with the lead. They had the halftime lead at 21-0, and they doubled up that score here using a couple of intercept, well, an interception, fumble recovery to put some points up on the board. And they've done it in all phases of the game today, Marty. They've been very, very impressive. Yeah, they are. They've, 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 just, they've been all year long, right from the get-go. They've been impressive, and they do it in all facets of the game, as you said. And Dino will field it. He's out across the 30. To the 35 to the 40 and out toward the 41 yard line before he's brought down in the play. It'll be first and 10. And on that special teams tackle was the Gabriel King getting a chance. So the sophomore, they say, hey, so it might have been 52 and not 57. That's an easy mistake to make. Yeah, Chris Hayes uh, with the tackle. Brett Bouchard still coming back out at quarterback here for one socket. Miguel Raymond, the sophomore backup for one socket, has, I, we have seen him play briefly. He played last Thanksgiving Day to avert a shutout on the very last play of the game. And this year he came in, tried to do the same, but uh, was picked off late in the game as well. well. Maybe he'll have some magic today. Bouchard to work under center. And they'll pitch it right side. Evans trying to turn it around the corner. Tried to slide through a hole, and he's going to be brought down on the play. A couple of guys in on the tackle. Gabori helping out. Got a late penalty marker thrown in the backfield of Woonsocket. Interesting. Clippers indicating it's going against the Villanovans. The Thanksgiving Day game was not the cleanest. There's going to be a personal foul against Woonsocket. There were a lot of penalties, not from the personal uh, personal foul variety, but there's a lot of holding and a lot of little stuff. And now you see in this game in a, in a 42 to uh, in a 42 point game, a little chippiness yeah. maybe in. Uh, a Cumberland flag for maybe a little excessive celebration after the extra point. And now, uh, you know, there's a clipper down on the field. Don't know who it is at this point in time. Yeah, but, you know, sometimes kids are kids and, and emotions run high, especially with these two programs. As we said, they are, they're rivals. They're border rivals. Uh, one socket to the north of Cumberland here in the state of Rhode Island. And, uh, well, the uh, scoring recap pretty easy today. Got fine with the uh, most recent touchdown for Cumberland. Uh, Make it 42 nothing after the extra point. Travers with a three touchdown effort today. Baxter with a couple of touchdowns. I mean, it's just been a terrific, terrific performance. Oh, it has been up it's top to bottom, and offensively and defensively for Cumberland. And, uh, Cumberland has capitalized when when Socket uh, when Socket has turned the ball over. They've done it in all phases of the game as well. Uh, defense, special teams. Uh, they're making their extra points, and it's been a pretty up until recently clean game on both sides of the field and what this does though too is this is a transformation of this Cumberland program who last won the title in 2004 is they lost the game 20 to 19 but were awarded the championship because Tolman High School used an ineligible player so this would be their uh, first Super Bowl victory on the field in many many years yeah that's why the little little mark next to it in the uh, on the website page huh? Here's a throw over the middle. It's That's going to be intercepted, anticipated brilliantly. Lazarus on the return, his second interception of the game, and he's down inside the 15-yard line. He read that play all the way, didn't he? And look at that. Cumberland has it first and 10 inside the 15. Yet another turnover. Yeah, Tommy Lazarus, all 12 pounds of him soaking wet. He's not the, uh, the biggest of guys, but he's back there for a reason. As you see on the replays, he is the free safety. Bouchard once again pump fakes and that has not fooled Cumberland at all. And here Tommy just steps up right through the play, right through the receiver. And he's off to the races and picks up a block and Cumberland back in business once again. And once again, Bouchard saving a touchdown uh, tackle right there of his own mistake. Azareth with a fumble recovery, now two interceptions. I backfield behind the quarterback, Gurren. They pitch it right side. Travis, Travis turns it towards the goal line. Touchdown on the pitch out right from 14 yards out. His fourth touchdown of the game. It is 48 to nothing. Nothing simple here, just the same pitch sweep. 
Joe Fine kicks out, gets a nice block by Trent Basie on the end. Picks up a block for Mitch Baxter, and off he turns the corner into the end zone. Boy, they made that look easy. Once again, though, they capitalize on a one socket turnover, and good teams will do that. They will take advantage of the other team's mistakes, and Cumberland is just doing that. A very, very good football team. And with 7.33 remaining, Tyler Caliber will now attempt the extra point. Snap is up, ball is down, kick on the way. And it's good. So they have a commanding, I'd say commanding, Marty. 49-0 lead with 7.33 left. And uh, probably, if you're Cumberland, like the cheerleaders down below, it is time to celebrate. Oh, absolutely. And uh, it'll be the program's first Super Bowl title. They did win in 1969. They were the Eastern Division champions. At that point in time, there were two champions in the state. Uh, there was an Eastern and a Suburban Division. Uh, they beat Winsaka, ironically, in Division Two that year, 1969, on Thanksgiving Day. And although they ended up with uh, beating Winsaka, Winsaka ended up with a tie on their schedule, according to noted historian Bill Eccleston from Barville, Rhode Island. Bill's father, uh, Tom Eccleston, one of the oh, mainstays here in Rhode Island, not only in high school hockey, but in high school football, as he's uh, won many state and New England championships in ice hockey, but also was the architect of many of the 15, the first 15 or 16 Super Bowls held by Barville High School here in Rhode Island as well. So uh, Cumberland uh, well on its way, obviously, to a uh, Super Bowl title here in Division II, and deservedly so. Coach Chris Skirk and his staff, they work very, very hard year-round, and uh, good things come to, uh, to good people, and these guys work very hard in this program. And they're doing it on a beautiful afternoon. The sun's starting to fight through the clouds, too, a little bit. It's a little brighter right now. As this game moves on with 7.30 left, at the kickoff will come down. It's going to be fielded. Wonsaka will have decent field positions. They move it out to the 35. Again, Torres on the return. He's done a nice job a couple of times now with a chance fielding that ball on special teams. Yeah, he has Francisco Torres, one of these uh, talented juniors from Wonsaka, who will be back next year for the Novens as... Uh, we'll see who's going to come out in quarterback now for... Uh, Still Brett Bouchard, you know, he's a senior. Uh, I expect Coach Carnell Henderson will leave him in the game for the remainder of the game. And uh, as Chris Skirk, you know, he may sub out, but at some point, you know, it's, talking to the guys in school this week, too, they're going to actually finish a the game they started. And you know, why not? They got you here. And you know, we'll see if uh, they do maybe on offense put some plays in and get them some experience. But to this point, they haven't. Tucker to snap it back out of the gun to Bouchard. They hand it off, second back through. That's Evans, slips to a tackle, stays on his feet, and good power running. Good little spin move to move it out toward the 48-yard line. They got about 12, enough for the first down. Oh, great job by Jalen Evans right there, who had 14 touchdowns on the year and rushed for over 1,000 yards during the regular season. So he's got skill. That's the one thing that Coleman has been able to do. And not only today, but the prior matchup, they haven't let Andino or Evans run wild against them. And credit, as you alluded to earlier in the broadcast, Coleman's size is just they're matching up up front. They're just a nightmare as there's an uh, injured player down on the ground. It looks like one of the Cumberland players by the great pants, Coach Chris Skrucker, heading out with Mark Levesque to uh, take a look at the down player. I cannot tell who it is by their number. That's interesting. You mentioned the fact that uh, the physical size of Cumberland just perhaps too much for Woonsocket. They did win the battle in the trenches today, in particular on the defensive side of the ball. They were roaring into that backfield, really pressuring Bouchard, forcing him to throw that ball quickly before perhaps he wanted to, creating a couple of fumbles and Hey, and on top of that, they cash in on it, Marty. Oh, absolutely. I, you know, so. I think what happened, too, is they started rushing Trent Vasey off the side. They started blitzing. Instead of bl middle blitz, yep. they started blitzing from the corners. And what that did was that forced more pressure to when soccer to change their coverage, and they would go back inside and outside. And then when they changed their coverage up, big number 74 for the Clippers. Um, Andrew Bartlett just kept shooting through into the backfield, and you know, it has been a dominating uh, defensive effort as Josh Pizzarelli getting off the deck to a nice hand from the crowd in front of the Cumberland faithful. Pizzarelli's uh, played a nice game here today for Cumberland and looks like he'll be okay as he comes to the sideline, which is great news. Great crowd on hand here at uh, Kacheri Field in East Greenwich. The uh, near side bleachers are full with uh, both Cumberland and Winsocket faithful. People lining the far sidelines behind the Winsocket bench as well as uh, looks like Winsocket's going to take a timeout. Yeah, they will call a timeout, talk it over here for a moment, and perhaps uh, regather, regroup a little bit, and 
start to uh, try to push that ball forward. Looking for some points here on this championship Sunday, the Division II Super Bowl. Yeah, when Socket had come into this game, uh, score averaging 22 points a game during the regular season, and they've scored 29 and 27 in their two playoff victories. And Cumberland has only allowed, as I said, 5.8 points per game, uh, 20 points in both playoff games, and yeah. impressive defense here as well for the Clippers. Yeah, they have flexed their defensive muscles today, that is for sure, Marty. They have been terrific. So Bouchard to work uh, under center out of the timeout. First and 10, pitch to Evans. Evans trying to turn it right side, got a blocker out front, finds a hole, and able to scamper through and slither all the way down to the 40-yard line. Good second effort, got him an extra two, and that's close to 12 yards, maybe 13 on the carry. Yeah, also, good job by Sean Ingram, number 75, kicking out from his left guard spot as they, they ran a little stunt. They pulled the guard around, the old John Hanna student, if you want, the John Hanna. Now you're dating yourself. Yeah, dating myself, thank you. <laughs> uh, they would just pull Hog out the side, that's and right. he'd just kick out, and they ran and a good job by Jalen Evans good hard running that time Poria goes wide to the right side they bring a wing to the near left side that's Mulvey they split the backfield behind Bouchard first and ten they pitch it near side and Dino trying to dance in the backfield able to escape fine and then he's brought down by the rest of that uh, very strong defense of the Clippers as he got it back to the line of scrimmage and that's about it the one place where Cumberland has substituted is on defense as Nevin Morales, number six in there, and Gene Wilson, another senior, number three in there. So Coach Skirker letting his seniors uh, backups, or not backups, just uh, next string play here as Sam Karen, another senior, checks into the game here for the Clippers. Smiling Sammy Karen is... Uh, <laughs> Smiling Sammy, I like that. Sammy Karen. I like that. <laughs> so uh, good job by Coach Skirker, you know, getting his seniors in, getting them some playing time in a Super Bowl. And, uh, Socket coming up to the line of scrimmage. Brett Bouchard, the quarterback, again under center. The eye backfield, second down and 10 to go. And they pitch it Evans. Evans trying to turn the corner. Finds a little hole. Good move. And he turns it down towards the 35 before he's buried. Might have got it down toward the 30-yard line with a second look. And uh, that's very close to the first down. He needed the 30. Yeah, good push up front by Winsocket's offensive line. Something we really haven't said a lot of today in the course of, over the course of this game. And they got a good push up front and uh, allowed Evans to get into the Clippers secondary that time. 49 to nothing, Cumberland leading. They led 21 nothing at the half. And they have the lead now with 3.54 and ticking on down here into the fourth quarter of play. They've been very opportunistic, Cumberland has. They really have. They uh, set the tone with that uh, opening drive when they march downfield for a score. This is Evans coming to the left side. Another nice move. Picks up the first down, and then he's grabbed and hauled down at about the 24-yard line. Yeah, Mitch Baxter just uh, held him up there, and Chris Hayes just kind of finished him off there. And, uh, you know, if you, I, who, who's your MVP of this game? There's so many, so many people on this Cumberland side who – Who've done everything? I mean, Tom Lazarus has done offensively some few big catches early on, a couple of picks, a fumble recovery. Uh, Brendan Guerin, a couple of good passes to Mitch Baxter. Eric Travis with four, count them, four touchdowns uh, for Travis as well as Bouchard under center now with 3.04 winding on the clock. A pitch it right side. Trying to turn the corner, Evans. And he's down towards the 19 yard line on the right. Down under three minutes left. But there's so many different people on this Cumberland team that, uh, you know, who do you, who do you credit? It's just, uh, I'm glad I don't have to choose that. I think Thomas Lazarus was terrific today. Tom, and, you know, had a couple of interceptions, that fumble recovery, the first turnover by Woonsocket. He recovered that. It just kind of really stopped all the momentum, I think, that Woonsocket was trying to put together here today. And uh, he'd be a guy I look towards. I mean, Travers with four touchdowns, another guy. The quarterback's been terrific, well, Brendan too. Brendan Garren as yeah. well. I mean, he, you know, he just he really got them going. When he, uh, he was laser-like uh, outside his first pass, he was very efficient as well. Bouchard wants to throw outright, and if he caught that, and that is a terrific catch. I don't think he did, or did he? Nope. Nope, he great didn't. Effort, Incomplete though. out on the right there by Mulvey. A great effort. Kyle Indeed. Mulvey was prone, but he was just fully extended right there. Bouchard just slung that out there as it is his throwing style. And a great job. Good good effort by Mulvey. You know, credit the Woonsocket kids with uh, 205 left on the clock. Still playing hard. They really are. They're looking for some points up on the scoreboard. 
here in this Division II Super Bowl game. We're bringing the festivities, the post-game festivities, down the field as they've started already on the sideline as the Gatorade has been dumped. Yeah, Coach Chris Skirk, you see Dan Stock right there with the Gatorade in his hands all over the back of uh, Coach Chris Skirker as they got him, uh, as Coach Skirker is uh, hugging some of his players now down the near sideline with the... Uh, you know, it's more than, you're more than just a football coach to these guys. You're a, you're a father figure, you're a role model, and uh, it's a bond between coach and player. That's Bouchard on the run, and he's bumped down. Contact made by Wilson. Nice work by Wilson over there on the far side. Credited with the tackle. Is Bouchard able to pick up a first down? If you're a head coach, I think that's a bath you don't mind having. That's on. right. And thank God the weather is a little better today than it was yesterday. <laughs> Otherwise, that would be a little chilly down Absolutely. the far side. Absolutely. A little frostbite to go along with that Gatorade. <laughs> yes, it would be. <laughs> so it's first and ten with Socket here. Uh, just about a minute remaining here in this Super Bowl game. Nobody in much of a hurry to stop the clock with this game, certainly not in doubt. 49 nothing Cumberland, very impressive game. 21 points in the first half, 28 more in the second half for a total of 49. I bet you didn't think I could add that up. Huh? That's good math right yeah, there. Did you like that? <laughs> I had to write it down to remember it. But. I did not know there would be any math on this quiz today. Otherwise, I would have studied. And, uh, Cumberland right now just in their base defense. I guess the only thing remaining, will Cumberland get the shutout? A well, penalty against one socket helping their cause right now as they're backed up outside the 10 towards the 17-yard line where it's first down. They can pick up a first down at about the two, but they're down to 39 seconds remaining. And Bouchard to work under center. Really a gutsy performance by the young quarterback. Throw out right, Mulvey catch, as he has been under a lot of pressure. He's not the biggest no. football player out there. He's had some big guys chasing him down. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Bouchard has, he, uh, he has withstood the uh, test of time as he has been uh, hit and uh, beat on and hit on. Uh, not only has he been sacked, but he's, had a, he's thrown a couple of picks, but uh, Vasey's hit him, Bartlett's hit him, Hayes has hit him. Uh, anybody who's got a shot to try to take a shot at him, but uh, showing great resolve getting back into that huddle is uh, when Socket will take a timeout here with 19 seconds remaining from Kacheri Field. This is the Ryan's Interscholastic League Division II State Championship football game. A mouthful. It really is. I'm glad you memorized all that. <laughs> yeah, memorized, but sometimes the tongue just doesn't want to say what the brain is uh, operating. Also reminded that at 3 o'clock uh, on the same network, or we'll see the host school, if you will, the East Ranch Avengers take on the Middletown Islanders in the Division Three Super Bowl matchup. Absolutely. Who do you like in that one? Are you, you going to go with the team uh, that lost the first time around East Greenwich, right here at East Greenwich, or do you I, go with the Islanders? Well, I, I think Middletown has 22 guys on their program who was in the uh, Super Bowl lost last year to Rogers, and for them it's uh, three yards in a cloud of dust, as has been the case in Middletown, a very tradition-rich football program. I uh, was at the Middletown Athletic Hall of Fame induction as we'll get to the uh, last play century of this game. We're trying to work under center out of the timeout. They're going to go for something here. They're going to throw it towards the end zone. It's up a grab. Baxter intercepts it. He's out towards the 10 and he continues to carry down the sideline. Little straight arm spun around, knocked down and out of bounds by Bouchard. We talk about his feistiness and look at him over there. He still wants a little piece, but interception and uh, there you go, that's the icing on the cake. Oh, that's it. Same play they scored on last year, believe it or not, in the Thanksgiving Day game to break the shutout. Mitch Baxter just goes up for the ball and takes it right out of the hands of Kyle Mulvey. And here Mitch is like, well, do I go? Do I not go? And he's just kind of dancing around there. And then at some point he's got an alley, and now you see him put, uh, uh, put the, uh, the Jets on. It's going to be uh, a block in the back on the return. And... Uh, what every coach's uh, dream is, victory celebration coming up and a Super Bowl title for the Cumberland Clippers. Absolutely. Really no doubt about it. They took control from the opening kickoff, advancing downfield, capped off on a one-yard touchdown run by Eric Travers. And, well, he'd eventually score four. Baxter with two. Fine had one. Uh, it just goes on and on here today as uh, they were absolutely terrific. Uh, and really all phases of the game. I know I sound like a broken yes. record, but uh, really that's what it, what it came down to. Just Bill Belichick play. would say it is what it is. That's and, right, it and is. And that's it. Yeah. And uh, 
you know, Coach Skrucker will uh, allow the seniors to stay on to take the last snap of their high school career. A good tribute to uh, the senior class as uh, Mike Lundy, the uh, assistant executive director for the Union Scholastic League, down on the field prepping the trophies for uh, the award ceremony to be held here at Kacheri Field uh, after the handshake. And that's going to do it. Cumberland 49, Lone Socket 4, your 2012 Division II champions, Marty. And I know that you, you know, you're close to this program. And uh, I know inside you're very pleased. The fans obviously enjoyed the performance by both teams. And congratulations to Lone Socket on a great season. And of course, Cumberland winning this championship. Yeah, yeah. Hats off to Lone Socket, too. Uh, third time in four years getting here to this game. Uh, tribute to Coach Henderson and their program. But, uh, you know, congratulations to Coach Strecker and, and the Cumberland High School. Big Blue, as they are called, uh, faithfully uh, in and around Cumberland High School. That's uh, a great fall campaign for them uh, as well. And, you know, Coach Strecker will tell you, too, not only is it for that for this team, but this is for every guy who's ever worn that royal blue uniform and being part of a program and some of the alumni on the field celebrating as well with uh, the coaching staff, the coaches exchanging hugs is uh the ceremonial uh, handshake at midfield between coaching staffs and players. Uh, Time-honored tradition, as well as uh, in hockey. It's one of the grand, not spectacles, but one of the parts of sports that I like. It's just, it's all over. Good job, good game, and, and on you move to the next thing. Absolutely. And, uh, well, they've met twice over, what, 10-day, 12-day span? Ten. And uh, it's amazing. Uh, these two teams come out and uh, give it their best once again. 49 nothing Cumberland with the win over one socket. And I do too. I love that little, uh, you know, little uh, parade at midfield. And congratulations to all. So, yeah, both well done. Yeah, you know, it is well done. And uh, coaching staffs, a lot of respect for each other. But uh, you know, in the end, the better football team, not only 10 days ago, but today, but the best team in the state. Everybody wanted the old Cumberland uh, Johnston matchup. They never got it. Uh, because Johnson got upset, and uh, irregardless, I, I think Cumberland would still have come out on top. Just haven't watched them from the first game of the season to where they are now. Uh, great coaching job, uh, great job by the players, very coachable. Family atmosphere, as we talked about, as you see the uh, Clipper players celebrate out there. New, uh, a lot of the print meter out there trying to take pictures, and uh, smiles all abound, and uh, much celebration be going on in Cumberland tonight. Absolutely. Well deserved. A terrific run oh, throughout is. the tournament. And they play with so much consistency. A lot of happy faces down there, Marty. Take a look. Oh, yeah, they're celebrating. It's funny. After the West Warwick victory, they were quick in their huddle. Coach Stricker went in. They took a knee, and uh, they were out of there quickly, as you see uh, Cumberland faithful. Uh, coaching staff. Coach Stricker has now taken off his uh, sweatshirt as we await the uh, awards presentations. As both teams will come back to their respective 45-yard lines. Uh, for the award presentation, the Frank Maury Trophy will be presented. Frank Maury, ironically, one of the first coaches that won soccer at high school. The MVP trophy is named in honor of Frank Maury, longtime coach and uh, educator in the city of Woonsocket. Mike Lunny, the uh, executive director out there on the field. Well, kind of a moment you, you kind of wait for. You anticipate your entire high school football career, that state championship trophy, and Cumberland's going to get it today and for Woonsocket. Well, they've had recent victory, you know, recent success, what, 2009 and 2010, and, hey, they made it back to the dance. That's all you can ask. Yeah, yeah, they did, and uh, as we said, give them credit. But at the, at the end of the day, a uh, whole boatload of credit, if you will, if not more, to the Cumberland High School Clippers in their program. And Coach Lunny hanging the trophies over to head coach Carnell Henderson, with a pat on the back. Coach Lunny, uh, new on the assistant director of the Inscholastic, longtime coach and athletic director at Portsmouth High School, Mike Lunny, doing a great job there. You see the captains and Bob Murray, the head coach at Tiverton High School, handing the uh, runner-up plaque to the Winsocket captains, uh, Kyle Mulvey. Ryan Legasse out there, along with Brian Cahill. They'll get an autograph, a white ball where they'll sign it and maybe go in the school's trophy case, one socket. A pretty big high school looking on Cass Avenue, one socket. Uh, the Citizens Bank uh, presentation pr trophy from Bob Murray, much to the delight of the throng in front of us, and the head coach Chris Skreka. You see the crowd going wild in front of the press box, and Coach Strecker holds it up, the players throwing their hands on the trophy as they are a family, and uh, 
maybe you would get the uh, Stanley Cup pass around the town uh, as well uh, before all is said and done. And uh, interesting to see who the Frank Mori uh, MVP trophy will uh, be presented to. And ironically, uh, the Frank Mori Winsocket educator will go to a member from Cumberland today. I love that with all the players reaching up to touch that plaque. <laughs> That's something they worked for since they were in the Cumberland Colts organization, the youth organization in Cumberland. They have a strong youth organization here in the uh, town of Cumberland. A lot of these players uh, moved upward to the high school level. And Coach Chris Skirker in his fourth year, his first turnaround of the program with a Super Bowl championship. Eric Travis, you know, well-deserved, Eric. Uh, good, uh, a very personal young man, a good kid, a heck of an athlete here for Cumberland High School. And, uh, you know, a kiss on the head from Coach Chris Kirk. And you worry about uh, the relationship the coaches have. And there's, you know, Dan Stock, you know, a fullback, you know, it's, it smiles. And it's all about each other. It's not about me. And right there, that's why you know the inner dynamics of a team sometimes rule it. And right there, the coming successful, not only on the field, but off the field as well. Absolutely. Fine presentation down below. Marty, great job. We'll rest our vocal cords. We'll be back for another in just a bit. Thanks That's for having a, me. That was a lot of fun. 49 nothing. your final score as you take a look at your 2012 Division II Super Bowl champions right here in the state of Rhode Island. Cumberland, 49, and Woonsocket, nothing. That's going to do it for our broadcast. We'll be back with our back end of the doubleheader in just a little bit. Goodbye, everybody. and helping us uh, clean up the stands as you exit and drop any trash in the containers at the bottom of the stairs or along the fence as you exit. Your assistance would be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, they make me do it.